Yeah. Ay. Ay. Yeah. Ay. We're living the book of the acts. I carry my cross in my back. My homies still stuck in the trap. Go hard in no time to relax. Keep your mind on the throne. Applying the stuff I've been shown. Been pacing through all of my walls. Been pacing through all of my walls. And I'm out here painting this picture. It came from the scriptures. I'm changing my mind now. And I've been examples. I've seen some examples. So I think it's just about time now. And yes, we are changing our life now. And when life gives us limits, we turn it to vengeance. We're strong in the Lord and His might now. All the tribulations, I just cannot stay the same. Wisdom I've been given has been helping with the pain. And the people that I love, they think that I've gone insane. When it gets gritty and looking really free, they pull up and show what they fail. I'm tripping, danger if you got no clue when you slipping, it's time to renew and stop foolishly sinning, cause we the ones set apart from the beginning, all that is filled with the thing that's forbidden, walking in life and I move with no vision, I'm moving like first to my mind, steady swimming, oh, habits gotta go, go, habits gotta grow, I got static chemicals, lows, the mind got traffic to compose, yeah, I gotta set aside, gotta recognize, do the scissors wise, do they compromise, are you for the prize, 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 are you in my heart, I will act. When no vision is people get capped. And idleness make every building collapse. These shackles up on me, they about to get cracked. I see too much potential that I'm trying to tap Way it. too long in the skin about side of it, been trapped. See the Lord, he been keeping me up out them cash. He gave me the go, why am I holding back then? Back then. It blessed me the ones making peace and no faction. I'm aim in the sky, knock the wings off the eagle. On top of pumps, just when a pipe in a crash land. Well, then I get myself right and I put off these habits. They off in the slight of my back end. Lately, I've been in a war with the man in the mirror. When tested, I pray and I'm yeah. passing. All the tribulations, I just cannot stay the same. All the wisdom I've been given has been helping with the pain. And the people that I love, they think that I've gone insane. When it gets gritty and looking really the they pull up and show what they fail. face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpets down. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that you bless us, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Sanctify those of us who may be sick, who may be sick amongst us, Lord. Heal us, Lord, quickly and speedily. Have your holy angels encompass around us at all times. Um, among the congregation, Lord, put your, those of us who are maybe, in this, maybe sick or had any ailments, we pray that you put them in the hands of the physician, Lord, and allow the holy the, um, healing hands within them, Lord, to heal us, Lord, to, to heal us who may be sick. 
strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen our congregation. Bless the bishops, the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, men, women, and children, Lord. Bless us all, Lord. Strengthen us. Allow those who seek our harm to be, to be brought back upon their own heads, Lord, to be, to be your will, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, we also pray that you bless the food and the strong drink as well. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Salute down, faith sisters. And to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Center them good. All right. They got me to hear me? Clear? All right. Um, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Today's topic is entitled uh What Goes Around Was Around. What goes around was around. Um let's go to Ecclesiastes one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, hear him? verse 1. Make sure. I don't get no message about they can't hear me. Make sure. All right, let's go. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 3. Verse 3. Yeah. Sorry. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Mm -hmm. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The earth abides forever. Go ahead. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. Mm -hmm. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. Bram, everything has a cycle. Man comes from the rivers, flow into the ocean, and back into the rivers again. The wind blows different directions. Or it's all a cycle. It's going into cycles. Go ahead. Verse 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Brad, the far one deal with this. There is no new thing under the sun. Because what happened yesterday will happen again today. Um, give me Matthew 3, verse 1. Three and one. The book of Matthew, chapter three, verse one. Mm -hmm. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Right, this is John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. Go ahead. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John the Baptist was running around teaching, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Because John the Baptist was the forerunner of the Messiah. He was the, he opened the red carpet up for the Messiah, who, who happened to be his cousin. Go to chapter 4, verse 17. So John the Baptist said, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, chapter 4, verse 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See that? So the same thing. Christ repeated the exact same thing that John the Baptist was teaching. So saying. Now, get Matthew 10, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples. His what? His 12 disciples. So he called unto him his 12 disciples or his 12 students. Disciples, go ahead. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Okay. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first Simon, who is called Peter, uh -huh. and, Andrew, and Andrew, his brother. And Andrew, his brother, because Andrew was, the, was John the Baptist's disciple, and he became Christ's disciple. Andrew, go ahead. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. James and John, the, brothers of, the sons of Zebedee, go ahead. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaeus. Labaeus, go ahead. 
whose surname was Thaddeus. Oh, Verse 4, was... Simon the Canaanite and Judas and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. I'm sorry, I left something out. So verse 1 calls them disciples, and then verse 2, it says, now the names of the 12 apostles. So they're called disciples in one, meaning the students, and they're called apostles or messengers. So they're called disciples in one instance, and they're called the apostles in the next. Verse 1, they're called disciples. Verse 2, they're called apostles. Keep that in mind. That's important. Disciples and then apostles. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. We're going to read to verse 7. Verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Do not go to northern kingdom as of yet. The ministry was not to go to northern kingdom yet. Go ahead. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Meaning rather go to the southern kingdom first and foremost. Go ahead. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what Christ said back in Matthew 4 and 17. Say the exact same thing that I'm teaching. And John was saying the exact same thing before Christ showed up. Um, verse, verse 7, right? Yes, sir. Now, give me um, 1 Peter 4 and 3. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. You're probably wondering why what the class is entitled, What Goes Around, Was Around. You'll see in a minute. 1 Peter 4, and let me get there with you, 3. No, 1 Peter 4, verse um, yeah, 3, 3 to 4. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. Abominable idolatries. So it's our time past, meaning in our past, when we walked in lasciviousness, sexual lust, lust, excess of wine, drunkenness, revelings, is clubbing, partying, that's parades, that's your New Year's celebrations. That's reveling too. Christmas is reveling too. Okay? Revelings and banquetings that goes into your Thanksgiving dinners and so forth and abominable idolatries. Verse 4, watch this. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So once you abstain from those things, it says that you know, people be will begin to speak evil of you because if you did those things, now you stop those things. And now they begin to speak evil of you. Now, get me chapter 2 and verse 12. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, um, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Meaning what? Meaning that, you're gonna have by 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 um by default um a bad reputation. Is true because people are gonna say you're in a cult, you're crazy, you're insane, something's wrong with you, you're not in your right mind, you're not celebrating Christmas, you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, you're not spending time with your worldly family. Something is wrong. You're being brainwashed. Something's not right. So they're gonna so when they see the change in you, okay, despite all the evil rumors about you, they'll say, wow, well. They might repent themselves. You might win people over in the midst of the slander being spoken against you. Because many of y'all are going to be affected by the slander against you, by the rumors against you, the evil speaking against you, how you're brainwashed. Some of y'all are going to fall. Some of y'all going to fall into that. You're going to fall by it, and you're going to go back into the world. So you can't take the pressure because this truth will bring pressure to your life. All right? So... By your good works, which they behold, and they're going to see how you look. They're going to see how you speak, how you dress. They're going to see these things. All right? So now, get me Acts 6 and 5. Acts 6 and 5. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen. A man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So this is when the disciples, when they became elders and Christ is gone, they chose deacons or disciples of their own. The disciples became elders and the, and the disciples established people under them, disciples of their own. Disciples of the disciples. Deacons, go ahead. And Philip. So they had Stephen, Philip, go ahead. And Prochorus. Prochorus. And Nicanor. And Timon. And Parmenius. And Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Come on. 
whom they set before the apostles. We're going to stop at verse 10. Yeah. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. So the understanding of, of Christ multiplied greatly. The, the truth began to spread increasingly. Go ahead. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Right, go ahead. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. So the synagogue of the Libertines. The synagogue of the Libertines. These are prestigious schools of learning from which the Jews set up. So their, el their elders showed up who were over these synagogues. The synagogue of the Libertines. Go ahead. And Cyrenians. That's Africa. Cyrenians, go ahead. And Alexandrians. Cyrenians would be um, Libya. Cyrenians would be Libya. Go ahead. And what else? Alexandrians. Ale Alexandria is Alexandria, Egypt. There's a synagogue in, there's a synagogue of, um, of Libertines, synagogue of, of Libya, synagogue of Egypt. These are Jews that had schools of learning. Set up, these elders were leaders that set up schools of learning in these areas. Go ahead. And of them, of Cilicia. And of Cilicia. And of Asia. Asia. Disputing with Stephen. And they were arguing with Stephen. Okay, they were arguing with Stephen. Go ahead, watch this. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And they could not. These were elders. These men were leaders. These are prestigious professors. You can call professors today. Leaders. Teachers. Educators. And they could not. And, and Stephen was cutting them to pieces. These are your mega church pastors today. Your Creflo. Your TDs, that's them right here. Okay? And many others, I don't know. Bishop knows them by name. I don't even know the name Creflo, TD. I would say Joe Austin, but he ain't our people. But uh, Creflo, TD, who else? Who? Onita Bynum. Who, no, that's a woman. Who else? A man, brother. Damn woman. Uh, Tony Evans. You got Tony Evans. Tony These Evans. are like prestigious leaders of institutions, churches, you could say. All right? So Stephen was cutting them up. All right now, that was verse 10. Yes, sir. All right, stop there. We're going to go to Luke 21. It says, They could not gainsay nor resist the wisdom by which he spake. Luke 21 and verse 15. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. This is the reason why people, I mentioned before, um, when I dealt with the, my class called Jews, the sister, that evil Jezebel was telling the sisters, you must exceed, you must stay, among your, stay amongst them and learn from them. But the Bible says, what the Pharisees teach, observe, and do, but do not as they do. That's not what that's talking about. The reason why they stick around is for this verse again. The reason why they stick around is for this verse. Read again, 15 again. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. That's why the defectors stick around, or they, or they stick around online, because they know what we're teaching is true. So they stick around, and they cannot gainsay what we teach, nor resist listening to us or watching us or learning from us. They'll say we're a cult. They'll say we're evil, we're wicked, we're demonic, whatever, and we're brainwashed, but they'll sit up there and put cultic, I see it's a cult, They'll put cultic precepts in their Bibles. They'll sit there and watch a class that we do for three, four hours straight. Three or four hours straight, we're the devil, we're a cult. Why? Why, why they can't stop watching us? Read 15 again. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries. All your what? Adversaries. Enemies. That goes for heathens too. Heathen-minded Jake. Heathen, um, heathens themselves and traitors. And defectors, go ahead. Shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. They can't speak against it, and they can't resist watching and learning from it. That's the Christ. I will give you wisdom that your enemies cannot go against. All they can do is slander you personally or, or speak evil of you or try to provoke you on personal matters. But scripturally, they cannot contest what you're saying. That's what they do. That's why they can't. That's why a lot of the haters are watching right now. You niggas that left up out of here, you're sitting in class right now because of this verse right here. Not because you sit there and try to apply Matthew 23 where it says, what the Pharisees observe and do, but they say and do not. No, that's not why you learn, learn from us. You learn from us because you, you can't resist nor gainsay what we're teaching. Because if you, if you were wicked, we were wicked and you were righteous, you would do better and teach better. 
and the stat and do and the Bible says do as they say, right? Not as they do. So if that if that's the case, if your righteous if your if your righteousness exceeds ours, you should have schools of learning. You should have schools of learning like we do all across all, all um throughout the world, which you don't. You're just sitting in your house watching us, because you cannot gain sin or resist the wisdom that comes from the congregate from, that comes from this body. Now get go back to Acts six and ten. So you cannot leave. That's so why you can't leave. You, you leave, but you're still here. It's weird. Acts 6 and 10. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake, because the spirit was in him, as it, is, as it is in the leadership here as well. It is in us, all right? It is in the bishop as well, bishops as well, and the deacons as well. And the captains and the officers who you sit and watch. Go ahead. Then they suborn men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. They suborn men, meaning they, they, they went and got men to slander him personally. Like I said, they can't gainsay nor contest his words scripturally, so they try to get personal, get dirt on you, dig up your past. Or take your words and twist them around and say, oh, you said this and you ain't said that at all. They'll edit your videos, chop it, circle your hand movements. Look at, look at his hands, Illuminati. That's what they do and they cannot gainsay nor resist your words. They start pointing out things you say or edit or chop it up. It's been done to me. It's been done to Bishop. It's been done to Ace. It's been done to most of us. But they'll take our words, chop them up, and circle them around. Circle. See what he said? And not play the whole video. Because they cannot gainsay nor resist the words that were brought that we bring out these scriptures. Read on. Verse 12. And they stirred up the people. What did they do? And they stirred up the people. And the leaders, they began to stir up the people. They stir up the people. Did they rouse up what? It's called propaganda. They start making phone calls. They start from reaching, reaching out to their little, their, their, to their, uh, they connect, the little connects. Listen, man, these guys are purple. You got to do something about them, man. They, they're causing problems here. I'm losing members. You got to do something about these guys. Start putting little um, articles in the news about, about um, you know, about people who start their own little camps or whatever that's doing crimes. Yeah, 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 compare them with them. There was a brother by the name of Peter. I think his name was Peter Moses. And I think, I believe he killed his wife, one of his so-called wives, girlfriend, he called the wife. And he killed her child because he believed that the child had homosexual tendencies. And so he ended up, I think he ended up killing the mother and his other wives. They helped him. Okay. And then when they had a video showing this brother and the sisters that he called his wives, his girlfriends he called his wives, they, had, they started flashing images of our congregation. That man wasn't part of our congregation. I believe, they, I believe they flash images of our congregation or they show, like, images of us or something like that. But he had nothing to do with us. But that goes back to them, what? Slander, the slander, the smear. They call it a smear campaign. When they can't gain sin or resist what you teach, they, they start resorting to personal, personal matters. Let's, 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 start, let's start grouping them together. They're all a cult. They're all violent. They're all hateful. That's what they do. Read on. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. And basically what happened was Stephen got arrested. Stephen got put on trial for the words he was speaking to these wicked elders of these congregations. All right? You know what? Because for them to stir up the people, for them to stir up the people, to stir them up, they had to have connections. They reached out, they reached out, made their little, um, sent the little letters or whatever, or today it would be a phone call, and they stir people up against Stephen. Because he was debating them. And they were losing. Read on. Verse 13. And set up false witnesses. See? And they set up false witnesses. False accounts. False claims. He ain't taking care of his kids. He a deadbeat. Those guys help dead brothers. They, they got rapists among them. They got pedophiles among them. In their congregation. They got murderers among them in their congregation. Yeah, yeah, brother. Sister got killed. In their congregation, and the brother, and they knew, they knew about it. Yeah. Meanwhile, it took place all the way across the ocean in, the, in freaking London 
we here in America, but somehow we knew about it. Just giving y'all clear understanding. Just giving y'all clear understanding of what people do when they cannot gainsay you scripturally. They have to start. They resort to carnal matters. They try to. They try to gain the hearts and minds. They try to move people against you, or stir them against you emotionally, not scripturally, emotionally. But what goes around was around. What happened before defectors and detractors. What happened before the disciples. What happened again? Happened again now. Happens again now. Read on. This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. They say this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. That was a lie. He was abuking them. Go ahead. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Because the Spirit of God was on them and they can see it. They knew that God was done with stepping, but because they were stirred up, their, their, their hearts are blinded. Now, hold on, let's go to, oh, I didn't even say out of the links, damn. Um, go to Wikipedia, go to early Christianity. Or the history, the history of Christianity, the history of Christianity. We're going to go down to where it says early Christianity. Regarding the doctrine on which the disciples were teaching back in the day. We're going to go down to where it says history of Christianity. I'm going to stretch it out because I got very little notes here. I got a lot to read. So I'm going to stretch it out. We're going to go down to history of Christianity. Go down to early Christianity. Yep, right there. 31 or 33. That one. No, no. Right there's one. Yep. We're going to start right here. Read that. Early Christianity, mm -hmm. 31 to 33 uh, to 324. Yeah. A. Early A.D. Uh, from B.C. to yeah, from, um, A.D. I mean, A.D., yeah. Early Christianity is generally reckoned by church historians to begin with the ministry of Jesus. Correct. That was Matthew 4, 17, and so on. Good. From 27 to 30 A.D. And end with the first council of Nicaea in and 325. Ended with the, and it ended, early Christianity doctrine ended with the first council of Nicaea. The reason why this is important, because you have simple black people that do not know history, and because the council of Nicaea sounds fancy coming out of your mouth, you keep repeating it. The council of Nicaea was when the council of churches, which is our people at the time, when we, dominant, when we took over the Roman Empire, it was renamed the Byzantine or Holy Roman Empire, from which, and you had church leaders which which were which pretty much believed in, in the doctrine of Christ, but they had their own philosophies a, a rap, attached to it. They basically had a discussion about the about the divinity of Christ, whether he was he had a human soul, whether he was God himself, half God, he was God the Father and the Son, or he's just the Son of God. There was a whole argument regard, revolving around the divinity of Christ that came hundreds of years after Christ walked the earth. People say, oh, they created, they made, Christ was created during the Council of Nicaea. No. The divinity of Christ was, the divinity of Christ or the discussion of Christ was pretty much discussed or, or the council was had regarding him 300 years later. Not, he, Christ didn't come after the Council of Nicaea. His, his um, he, he came before. So it says, it says that, that the early, the, the early tenets of, Christ, of, of the Christian doctrine, which, which was called Christianity, which is called Christianity today, ended during the Council of Nicaea because during the Council of Nicaea they instituted Roman Catholic doctrine or Sunday worship, Easter celebration, Christmas was instituted. Pagan ideals were instituted into the doctrine of early Christian teachings, which is called or referred to as early Christianity. Prior to that, early Christianity, quote-unquote, early Christian, I'll call it early Christian, the early Christians' doctrine was different. All right? Be on. Move the screen, because we can't see. Yeah, move the screen, please. Yeah. It is typically divided into two periods. So the early Christianity, or the early Christian movement, I'll call it, the early Christian movement, because Christianity makes it bother me. Christianity is not biblical. Christianity is not a biblical word. 
So the early Christian doctrine or early Christian period got the apostolic age. So the first period was called the apostolic age. Remember early in Matthew 10, they were called disciples in Matthew 1, 10 and 1. They were called apostles in Matthew 10, verse 2. That's why I said keep that in mind. It's called the apostolic age, the age of the apostles or the age of the disciples. Go ahead. From 30, age of the disciples. Go ahead. From 30 to 100 A.D. When the first apostles were still alive. Right. That's the 12 disciples or the 12 apostles. Go ahead. And the anti-Nicene period from 100 to 325. Right. Which came, which were, which were elders of Israelites as well that pretty much came after the death of the original early Christians. Once the original early Christians were killed off and persecuted and chased off and murdered off and were very, very few, if not none, none left in number, then you had a bunch of idiots rise up as Christians themselves and begin to discuss the divinity of Christ because they were, the, the early Christians were killed off. So they had no one to question. They had no one to talk to or to teach them about, about the true doctrine of Christ because they were either killed off or murdered off. So they begin to discuss or have a council about the doctrine of Christ now because they were a bunch of idiots. And that's how the Council of Nicaea was established. So a bunch of dumb black people or dumb, church, dumb black church leaders which goes back to what? Your Libertines, your Serenians, your Alexandrians. Same thing, same ignorance again. Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, same thing all over again, different titles in this time. Nothing new under the sun. Next part, apostolic age, apostolic age. Apostolic age. The apostolic age is named after the apostles and their missionary activity. By all the acts of the apostles, same thing. The apostolic age is named after the apostles and their missionary activities or acts. Go ahead. It holds special significance in Christian tradition as the age of the direct apostles of Jesus. Right. Go ahead. A primary source for the apostolic age is the acts of the apostles, but its historical accuracy is questionable and its coverage is partial, focusing especially from Acts 15 onwards on the ministry of Paul. And ending around 62 A.D. with Paul preaching in Rome under house arrest. Right. Paul was arrested also. Paul was, was also put on trial for teaching the same thing. And under house arrest. Go ahead. The earliest followers when you read of Jesus. Acts, when you read, I'm sorry. When you read Acts chapter 28, Paul was under house arrest. And, and the elders of synagogues in Rome would come to visit him while he was under house arrest, awaiting his trial. And, he would, and then if they, weren't, if they didn't come visit him... He'd write them, he'd write the Jews in Rome, of the synagogue in Rome, letters. That's the letter of Rome, letters of Rome, book of Romans. That's what that's alluding to. Go ahead. The earliest followers of Jesus were a sect of apostolic, oh, apocalyptic. apocalyptic, sorry, Jewish Christians. Read again, read again. The earliest followers of Jesus were a sect of apocalyptic Jewish Christians. So the earliest followers of Jesus were a sect of apocalyptic Jewish Christians. Christians, because they, were they, they taught about what was going to come in the last days. That's Matthew 24. All right? Go ahead. Within the realm of Second Temple, of, of Second Temple Judaism. So they were teaching these Jewish Christians, keep that in mind, Jewish Christians within the realm of the Second Temple Judaism. Go ahead. The early Christian groups. The early Christian groups. Go ahead. Were strictly Jewish. They were strictly Jews. Strictly Jewish. Go ahead. Such as the Ebionites and the early Christian community in Jerusalem, led by James the Just, brother of Jesus. Right, brother, Christ's brother, go ahead, James, go ahead. According to Acts 9, they describe themselves as disciples of the Lord and followers of the way. And according to Acts 11. Right, the way, go ahead. A settled community of that's disciples. That's get that thing from. If you watch Mandalorian, he goes, this is the way. That's where they got it from. A lot of these movie producers follow, follow the Bible. If you watch the show Mandalorian, he goes, this is the way. They got to get, get it from this, from the Bible. The way, the Bible, the truth of Christ is called the way. We know of that way. You read the script, they call it that way. Go ahead. Um, they describe themselves as disciples of the Lord and followers of the way. And according to Acts 11, a settled community of disciples at Antioch were the first to be called Christians. Right, get Acts 11.26. They were the first to be called Christians. Get Acts 11.26. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. 
and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And the disciples are first called Christians first in Antioch. First in Antioch. Now get jump to verse 19 to see what the disciples were. Verse 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution. Keep that in mind. They which were scattered abroad upon the persecution. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. That arose about Stephen. That arose about when Stephen. We'll get to that later on. Go ahead. Traveled as far as Phoenice. Phoenice is Phoenicia. That's Phoenicia. All right? That's, a, a, that's um, part of Israel. Go ahead. And Cyprus and Antioch. Preaching. Syria. I'm sorry. Preaching the word to none. But unto the Jews only. They were preaching to the Jews only. Why? Because Christ said, go to the lost sheep. So they didn't, they didn't deal with Northern Kingdom as of yet during the time of the persecution that started from Stephen and onwards. Remember, remember we earlier that Stephen was on trial for the slander that was spoken against him. All right? So once that happened, so Stephen, they began to persecute the church or the early Christian church. All right, the early Christian um, members. All right, so they were teaching the Jews only during that time. So the disciples could not have been heathen because their job was to teach Jews only. You can't be a heathen and teach Jews only if it's for Jews only. So the disciples who were called Christians in Acts 11 26, they were Jews themselves, teaching Jews only during that time prior to Cornelius. All right. And Christ gave an example of them eventually done with Northern Kingdom when he spoke to the woman and he spoke to the sister at the well. But it wasn't time yet. Now, get me, go to Jewish, click Jewish Christians. Yep, there we go. Read that here. We're going to start at Rabbinic Judaism. Jewish Christian. Jewish Christians were the followers of a Jewish religious sect that emerged in Judea during the late Second Temple period. Same thing, go ahead. First century A.D. Mm -hmm. The Nazarene Jews integrated the belief of Jesus as the prophesied Messiah and his teachings into the Jewish faith. Hold it on. One second. This is the Nazarene Jews, right? Um, a second, one second, one second. On. Give me Acts 24, verse 5. Real quick. The book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 5. They were called Christians first at Antioch. Watch this. For we have found this man, a pestilent fellow. They're referring to Paul. Go ahead. And a mover of sedition. They among, call Paul a mover of sedition. Slander again. Among all the Jews throughout the world. Among all the Jews where? Uh, throughout the world. Among all the Jews throughout the world, because Israel was an omnipresent people. We were everywhere. And we tried to reach, and, uh, and the disciples tried to uh, try to reach Israel everywhere throughout the known world. They tried to reach them. Go ahead, read on. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. And a ringleader of what? A sect of the, of the, of the sect of the Nazarenes. They refer to us as Nazarenes because Christ came from Nazareth. They call them Christ of Nazarene, the Nazarene. Not Nazarite, Nazarene, meaning as in the city of Nazareth from which Christ is from. So they either refer to us as Christians or they refer to us as, they refer to us as a sect of Nazarenes. They call Paul the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, all right, or Nazarene Jews. So go back to this, go back to uh, this again. It says... The Nazarene Jews integrated the belief of Jesus as the prophesied Messiah. They taught that Jesus himself was the Messiah spoken of or foretold of in prophecy. Go ahead. And his teachings into the Jewish faith. And they in, in, incorporated his teachings into the Jewish faith. Watch this. Including the observance of the Jewish law. So the Nazarene Jews or the early Christians or Jewish Christians incorporated belief in the Messiah and what? It says Jewish law. So the disciples were teaching the faith in Christ and the laws. So when you say that you're a Christian and you believe in the Messiah, but you're not teaching the laws along with that, you're not a Christian. You're a pagan. Continue. 
The name may derive from the city of Nazareth. It does. Nazarene. Nazareth. Go ahead. We went from which Christ was from. Go ahead. Or from prophecies in Isaiah and elsewhere where the verb occurs as a descriptive plural noun. Or from both. Come on. Jewish Christianity Watch this. is the foundation of early Christianity. Jewish Christians are the foundation of the early Christians. So the Christians, the Christianity, quote unquote, of the Jews derives from early Christians. So meaning they come, meaning they, they're both one and the same. Jewish Christians derive from the early Christians. Go ahead. Which later developed into Christianity. Which later developed these things, these two forms, Christ, Jewish or early Christians, later developed into what? It says. Which later developed into Christianity. Christianity. Into modern Christianity. We're going to get with that as well later on. Go ahead. Christianity started with Jewish eschatological expectations. Jewish eschatological means last day expectations. End of the world expectations. The ending of the kingdoms, the Gentiles. Expectations. Us getting delivered, us getting the kingdom back. That's that's eschatological expectations. Christ coming back. Christ returned, his second coming. Go ahead. Read again from the top. Christianity started with Jewish eschatological expectations. And it developed into the worship of a deified Jesus after his early, after his earthly ministry, his crucifixion, and the post-crucifixion experiences of his followers. Right, go ahead. Modern scholarship is engaged in an ongoing debate as to the proper designation for Jesus, first followers. So modern scholarship is engaged in an ongoing debate as to the proper designation for Jesus' first followers. Why is that? Keep reading. Many see the term Jewish Christians as anachronistic. Anachronistic means it does not fit the right time because you had followers of believers of Christ before the disciples, like the prophets, Isaiah, um, Daniel, uh, Malachi, or pretty much all the prophets foretold or, or spoke of a, of, a, of a Messiah to come. So they say that by saying that the first Christians were during that time is a bit wrong, but I understand what they mean. Go ahead. Given that there is no consensus on the date of the birth of Christianity. Go ahead. Some modern scholars have suggested the designations Jewish believers in Jesus or Jewish followers of Jesus as better reflecting the original context. The inclusion of non-Jewish or non-Jews led to a growing split between Jewish Christians, the Jewish followers of Jesus, and non-Jewish Christians. So it says the inclusion of non-Jews led to a growing split between Jewish Christians, i.e., an example, the Jewish followers of Jesus. Jewish followers means the Jews that adhere to Mosaic law or temple law, okay, meaning sacrificial law, okay? So it says that the inclusion of non-Jews led to a growing split because the Jews did not have any dealings with Gentiles. And Gentiles in terms of Israel being scattered abroad, northern kingdom. When the disciples began to teach northern kingdom, it caused a rift in the faith because many of our people maintained a prejudice that dates back to the split of the kingdoms regarding southern kingdom and northern kingdom. So it caused a huge rift. Okay? I'm going to get that in a minute. Read that again. The inclusion of non-Jews led to a growing split between Jewish Christians, the Jew, the Jewish followers of Jesus. Being Judah, go ahead. And non-Jewish Christians. As in northern kingdom that repented in Christ and began keeping the laws. It caused a rift. Because remember, we read earlier in Acts 11 that they were teaching the Jews only. But then that changed with Cornelius. That changed with Cornelius. Now, some would say, no, really, no, Cornelius, because remember the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian, he wasn't a Jew. Yes, he was. Because it tells you during the time of, of um, man, let's get that. Acts 11. Give me real quick uh, Acts 8. Real fast. I'm just going to side note, sidebar real fast. Because some scholars say that the first Gentile being taught was by Philip to the Ethiopian. Acts 8. Do I want to go there yet? Mm, hold on a second. I want to jump ahead. I'll go there later. Where we at? Go back to where he's at. I'll go there later. I, I got it written down later on. I'll get back to that later. All right, yes, sir. Matter of fact, no. Give me Romans. Give me Hosea first. Give me Hosea first. Hosea 1. 
regarding it says it says Jews and non-Jewish. Non-Jewish means Gentile. So a lot of you Christians are going, yes, yeah, see, you're cutting yourself. It says non-Jewish. No, I'm not. Hosea 1, we're going to be verse 10 to, no, Hosea 1 and verse 10. The book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Which cannot be, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Go ahead. No numbered. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. The place that was said unto them, meaning the children of Israel, who as the sand of the sea, it shall be said unto what? Unto them that what? Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So the context of this, of this chapter pretty much is referring to northern kingdom being exiled from God. God said, you guys, not my people, you'll receive no mercy. And then the Lord will eventually return and grant northern kingdom a chance to repent, as we're going to read here. Verse 11, watch this. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah. Stop. Then shall the children of Judah, from whence the term Jew comes from, or Jews comes from, plural. Then shall the children of Judah, Jews, go ahead. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, that's Ephraim, or northern kingdom. Watch this. Be gathered together. They will come back together. How? Through the faith in Christ. This understanding right here was not understood by Judah. They did not understand that. They thought Northern Kingdom was cast off, the, um, cast off, made strangers, not God's people forever because of that beat between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Going back to the splitting of the kingdoms. That's why the Bible, the Lord said, and when you read it, this is of me. Because the Lord had a plan to re reunite both 12, all 12 tribes back together in the faith of Christ. The Jews who were raised in Judaism did not understand that, that, did not understand that, that prophecy. Read verse 11 again. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel. For the children of Ephraim, go ahead. Be gathered together. Be gathered together. How? Read. And appoint themselves one head. They would appoint themselves one head. Who's that head? That's Christ. That head would, that head would be the reason behind them coming together again. Why? Because they were split as southern kingdom Judah, northern kingdom Ephraim, or northern kingdom Israel, SK and NK. Read on. And they shall come up out of the land. They shall come up, meaning be taken up, delivered out of the land. The land, because the majority of both kingdoms or both tribe, both kingdoms is here. This land here, America. Come, they shall both come up out of the land. Singular. Go ahead. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Great shall be the day of their what? Their deliverance. Out of that land and the lands in which those two kingdoms are scattered abroad. The majority is here. Remnants of that majority are everywhere else throughout the world. Like I said in Acts 24, verse 5. Read 11 again. Up to the top. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel. The children of Judah and the children of Israel. Go ahead. Be gathered together. And appoint themselves one head or that one mean Christ. That's the one head. Give me John 11 now. John 11, 49. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 49. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. One man should die for the people, go ahead. And that the whole nation perish not. The whole nation is not just Judah. It's Judah and Israel, meaning all 12 tribes. Caiaphas, who was an elder at this time, like the Libertines, like the Cyrenians, um, Cyrenians or Cilicia, Antioch, like them, he was, but he was a high priest, okay? Him and Caiaphas and Annas, or Ananias, were a high priest at this time. And he was speaking to the people at this time and told them, listen, it is expedient, according to, it is expedient, according to prophecy, that one man should and will die for the people that the whole nation 
Judah and Israel does not die. Read. Verse 51. And this spake he not of himself. He was not speaking about that one man dying being himself. Go ahead. But being high priest that year. Being high priest that year, because him and Ananias would, would, switch, would, would switch. Go ahead. He prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. He prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Not just that nation as in Judah, but that whole nation back in verse 49. Back in verse 50. Read on. And not for that nation only. Not for that nation only. Go ahead. But that also he should gather together in one, the children of he God. He should do what? Gather together what? In one. He should gather together in one. He should gather together in one. We just read that in Hosea 111. Judah and, um, and Israel come together, gather together, and appoint themselves one head. So the, that nation only is referring to who? Judah. Go ahead. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. The children of God that what? That were scattered abroad. He should gather together not only the Jews, but the children of God, which is northern kingdom, that was scattered abroad. Go ahead. Then go ahead. from that day forth, they go ahead. took. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Then from that day forth, the Jews sought to have him put to death. Read the next verse. Watch this. Verse 54. Jesus, therefore, walked no more openly among the Jews. Because being Judah, because Judah was evil and trifling as hell. Watch this. But went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim. To a city called Ephraim. Go ahead. And there continued with his disciples. And he taught northern kingdom there. He taught them there. Because Judah was wicked. He said, I'm going to go to, I went to Judah already. Judah already. Y'all wicked as hell. Try to kill me. Let me go. He walked no more openly among the Jews. He still taught the Jews. But then he went and started going to the northern kingdom over there. But he went to the Jews first. There was an order to things. He told the disciples, he told the disciples the same thing. Don't go to Samaritans. Don't go there just yet. Just go to Israel. Go to Judah first. Because they already had the law. The other kingdom don't have the laws yet. So deal with those who know better first. Then deal with those who don't after. That's what he was saying. That was the order of things. That's why Acts 11 verse 19 they followed that same blueprint. They were called Christians based upon their teachings. In verse 26 of Acts 11. Now, go back to um, Wikipedia again. And read the, the inclusion of John Jews. The inclusion. The inclusion of non Jews led to a growing split between Jewish Christians, the Jewish followers of Jesus, and non Jewish Christians. But, matter of fact, get me now. now. Hosea 1 11, right? Read already? Yes, Give sir. me Romans 9 now regarding the non Jews being Gentiles. I don't, I don't want to leave that out. Now, watch this. Some of y'all, oh, you're Gentiles. Yeah. Other nations. Yes. Other nations. See? Romans 9. I'm going to cut it real fast. Romans 9, verse 24. Watch this. Romans 9, 24. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 24. Even us whom he have called. Not of the Jews only. Even us whom we have called, not the Jews only. Go ahead. But also of the Gentiles. But also of the Gentiles. So right here, Paul's talking about Jews, as in Judah. He has called the Jews. He's, not only has he called the Jews only, but he's also called the Gentiles. Right? He's asking the question. Has he only called the Jews only or Judah only and not the Gentiles too? Because this right here caused an issue between the, the followers of Christ who were Jew, Judah and the followers of Christ who were not Judah, meaning northern kingdom. It caused a rift. Watch this. So he says Jews and Gentiles. Watch this. As he said also in O.C. Regarding Jews and Gentiles, what do he say in O.C. or Hosea? I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved. Which was not beloved. Why is he quoting Hosea 1, 11 regarding Jews and Gentiles? Why? Because Jews is Judah. So if Jews is Judah in Hosea 1 and 11, who are Gentiles in Hosea 1, 11? Israel. Is that clear who Gentiles are? Is that clear? That's what, why, would, why would he quote Hosea 1 to reference Jews and Gentiles? When Gentiles are not referenced in Hosea 111, 
but they but you had but the children of Israel were became became Gentiles when God said, "You're not my people." When you read above in the chapter, get Hosea chapter two, Hosea two and twenty three, and her beloved, which was not beloved, Hosea two twenty three, the chapter next of Hosea. The book of Hosea, chapter 2, verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will sow her, meaning Israel, unto me in the earth. Watch this. And I will have mercy upon her. And I will have mercy upon her, the same mercy that he, that he took away from her back in Hosea chapter 1, which goes, goes into the word Laruhama. No mercy, lo, or lo ami, not my people. He said, to, he said regarding the northern kingdom, you will not have any mercy for me anymore and not be my people. If you're not God's people, what do you become? Gentiles. We was there too again. And I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will bring, I will gather her back unto me in the earth. Go ahead. And I will have mercy upon her. And I, and I will have mercy upon her again when they appoint themselves one head. Go ahead. That had not obtained mercy. And I, that had not obtained mercy. Go ahead. And I will say to them, which were not my people. And I will say to them, who I deemed no longer my people. Go ahead. Thou art my people. That you are my people. You are the sons of the living God. He's repeating Hosea 111. He's repeating himself. Read again. No top. Read again from the top. Do they get it? And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say, I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. He's referring to Israel. He's quoting Hosea 1. He's, re he's repeating Hosea 1, verse 1 to 10 and 11. That's not other nations. You can't get other nations out of that. You cannot get other nations out of that verse. Now, go back to Romans 9 again. So the thought is not lost. Read 24 again and 25 again. The book of Romans. Chapter 9, verse 24. Even us, whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, as he saith also in O.C. As he saith also in O.C. or Hosea, regarding Judah or Jews and Gentiles. Go ahead. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. He's referring to Israel. That's the northern kingdom. Gentiles is northern kingdom. Or the children of God scattered abroad. That, that Caiaphas spoke about in John 11, verse 49 to 52. Next verse. Verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living God. He's quoting, he's, he's quoting Hosea 1 and, and 11. Referencing Jews and Gentiles. He quoted Hosea 2 and 23 regarding Jews and Gentiles. Read the next verse. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Concerning who? Israel. So Jews and Gentiles is Israel. There's no denying this. Go ahead. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. That's Isaiah 10, 22 he's quoting. So Paul Reference Jews and Gentiles and quoted all scriptures regarding Israel. There is no spiritual Israel. That ain't in the Bible. Ain't no spiritual Ishmaelites. Ain't no spiritual Edomites. Ain't no spiritual Moabites. Or ain't no spiritual Israelites either. For Christians to just, just lie and just make things up. Go back to where is that now. Now I think I got it now. The inclusion of non-Jews. The inclusion of non-Jews led to a growing split between Jewish Christians, the Jewish followers of Jesus, and non-Jewish Christians. The former observed the Pashach meal as the last supper on the 14th. The former observed the Pasach. That's Passover. Read it again. The former observed the Pasach meal as the last supper on the 14th of the Nisan. Remember, they broke bread with the Lord on the Passover. So he's saying that it's just, they're saying here that they observed that all the time. They broke bread during that, during that time. Go ahead. During the Passover, go ahead. According to the quarto decimen, quarto decimen, quarto quarto decimen, decimen practice, practice commanded by the Torah, mm -hmm. whereas the latter declared a Lenten 
fast until the Lord's Day at the end of the Holy Week, appropriating the name of Pascha. Pascha for their Eucharist. Eucharist to break the fast. So it went from them. It went from the early Christians celebrating or breaking bread during Passover, which we do, and as the Messiah did, we break bread all the time when we come together. Because Christ said, "Break bread every time you come together." But we break bread also during Passover. But it says, according to Leviticus, according to um. Uh, the quarter decimal practice. I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but it says after and later on, it says whereas late latter declared the latter going into what? That's the Nicene period. After the Council of Nicaea, they began to keep um, the Lord's Day at the end of the Holy Week, appropriating the name of pa- and, and they and they used the word Passover for um, the um, where is it at? Go back up. Whereas the letter declared a Lenten fast. And they, and they called the Lent Passover. Click Lenten fast real quick. I think that's Lent. Yep, same garbage. Go back. I don't even want to see this stupidness. Go back. So we went from celebrating Passover and breaking bread during Passover. Then as Christ, the Christian doctrine or early Christians was corrupted during the Middle Ages, they began to, call, they began to celebrate Lent and replaced and called it um, the Passover, Lent became Passover. It says, um, whereas the latter declared a Lenten fast until the Lord's Day at the end of the Holy Week, appropriating the name of Pascha for the Eucharist break of the fast, being Lent. Because during Lent, you ate certain, but you couldn't eat fish. Some of you only eat fish. Right, you're going to eat fish, no meat. Yeah, no meat, or whatever, man. Garbage. Keep going. Um, uh, from the wh- latter, watch from- this. I'm sorry. Uh, whereas the latter declared a Lenten fast until the Lord's Day at uh-huh. the end of the Holy Week, appropriating the name of Pascha for their Eucharist to break the fast. Watch this. From the latter. From the latter, going back to that Lenten custom, going back to that um, Eucharist, breaking the fast. Watch this. Nicene Christianity. What, what's it called? Nicene Christianity. Nicene Christianity. That's the Council of Nicaea, where they incorporated pagan rituals and customs of sun worship into Judaism. That's how modern Christianity was born. Roman ideology merged into Judaism, which is sun worship, merged into Judaism is modern Christianity. Today, latter Christian, the latter Christians of today are Nicene Christians. Go ahead. Nicene Christianity eventually arose, which theologically rejected Jewish Christians. Stop. So it says the Nicene Christianity eventually arose, which theologically rejected Jewish Christians. Meaning what? They began to reject the original teachings of Christ. They began to kill and persecute them. So it says the nice, click, 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 um, click that, Nicene Christianity, click that real fast, see what that says. They even got black folks in the look, look, bunch of black people. Put the picture, please. <laughs> wow. These are church, black church fathers. Wow. They can't even hide, can't even hide it. Well, they, they whitewashed. They, they blacker than that. I've seen that picture before. They ain't darker than that. But these are the black folks here. Go back out. They're called church fathers. Read that here. The term great church. The term great church is used in the historiography of early Christianity to mean the period of about 180 to 313 A.D. Between that of primitive Christianity... Primitive goes back to the early Christians, the disciples, the apostles, go ahead, and their disciples, of their disciples, and their disciples, go ahead. And that of the legalization of the Christian religion in the Roman, Roman Empire. Empire. So you had illegal Christians, which they were killing, like the disciples of the disciples, like they were killed, like John's disciples, John Revelator's disciples, you got people like Polycarp, and other names, uh... Iranius. Yeah, Uranius, Uranius, different names, different guys. Um, what's his name? Polycarp and some other guy's name. Ignatius. Nah, it's another name. It's a basic name. But anyway, you had diff- you had disciples of the disciples. But after after a while, the strength of a doctrine began to die and wane off. You had a black guy in it, but that taught in Africa named he brought the Catholic doctrine too. The guy's name. They say he bought, he was a Negro that bought whatever. Anyway, it says the great church. Read it again. 
the, uh, the term great church is used in the historiography of early Christianity to mean the period of about 180 to 313. Uh-huh. Between that of primitive Christianity and that of the legalization of the Christian religion. Right, because 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 the doctrine, the early Christians, remember since they were um they rejected Jewish Christianity. Because under the Roman Empire, the the, the faith of Christ and the commandments of God, the early Christian doctrine was illegal. They were killing us. It was illegal to teach that. So Constantine came and said, you know one thing? I got it. I have an idea. So that there's peace in the kingdom, and we're not killing these guys all the time. Let's just merge the doctrines together. Let's make it so that pagans and Christians alike can observe the same thing. Because he himself was a pagan. He was a sun worshiper. Oh, the other guy was Tertullian. Tertullian. Thank you. Tertullian was the other guy. He brought this doctrine over to Africa. He was a Negro, too. Tertullian. That guy, Tertullian. Go ahead. Um, some other guy's name I can't think of also, aside from Polycarp, some other guy's name. Go ahead. Of the Christian religion in the Roman Empire, corresponding closely to what is Wait, called... Go, down, go, down to, go, go to images real quick. Go to image again. Forget again. Go to image again. Um, blow it up. Can you zoom in? Let me see something. Nah, nah, um, but they're wearing shoes. Go back out. That's not their feet. <laughs> That's the shoe. wearing shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they ain't that black. They ain't make them that black. But you can see they're brown. They were, they were, just, they were just lightened up a little. They were, I've seen that before. They're darker than that. Um, Keep going. Corresponding closely to what is called the anti-Nicene period. Right. Corresponding to what is called what? The anti-Nicene period. That's what that is. These guys here, these church fathers rejected the original Christian disciples and started to incorporate Constantine's doctrine of sun worship merged into Judaism. That's why they, that's why they, they got, and so once they started killing off the real teachers of Christ, they had to have a counsel regarding what he was. Was he the son of God? Was he God himself? They were, they, they were stupid. They didn't know anything. Like you idiots that leave a body here. Go ahead. Read on. It has rightly been called the period of the great church in view of its numerical growth, its constitutional development, and its intense theological activity. Read this here. It has been defined also as meaning the church as defended by such as Ignatius of Antioch. That's one. Irenaeus of Lyons. You mentioned him, Irenaeus of Lyons. Go ahead. uh, Cyprian. Cyprian of Carthage. Right. And origin of origin. Ale- or origin. origin of Alexandria. I think the closest that came to the true doctrine of Christ was Oregon. He came the closest. But they were all by that time it was all corrupted. They had their own opinions. But I think Oregon was the one that came the closest to the true doctrine of Christ or the disciples. He was the closest. Out of all those guys mentioned, Ignatius, Irenaeus, Cyprian, Tertullian's another one, Oregon's another one, and you have Polycarp and another guy. Guy's name, Polycarp, and some other guy's name. I can't think of it right now. It was so also ju- uh, Justin too. And who? Justin? Is he thinking of? No, nah, it's not Justin. I can't think of his name. Clement. Thank you, Clement. Him. Thank you, Cap. <laughs> Clement. Him. Clement of Rome. That guy. Clement and Polycarp. I think were the closest. And this guy, Oregon. I think were the closest. But it was all by that time the doctrine of Christ was be- became. Opinionated. It became like they started incorporating their own beliefs and opinions into what Christ meant or what he said when the Bible says what it says. All right. So read on. Characterize possessing read on verse. It has been defined. And characterize it has been defined also as meaning the church as defended by such as Ignatius of Antioch, Iranius of Lyons, Cyprian of Carthage, and Oregon of Alexandria and characterized as possessing a single teaching and communion over and against the division of the sex. Gnosticism. Gnosticism. Gnosticism and the heresy. Right, people who did not really, um, really believe in the Bible at all, and heresies, the different doctrines. So I, I believe Oregon, I could be wrong about Oregon, but I think, it's my opinion, I believe he came the closest, or one of the few. But it was all madness among all of them. All that was all among all of them was madness. It was you'll find an error in each of them when you read when you research their their tenets or what they believed regarding the doctrine of Christ. 
you'll find minor errors in each of these guys listed here. Major ones and minor ones listed among most of them. Um, so these, so the great church represents the Ni Anti-Nicene Church. That's where, from which all Christian doctrines of today derive from. That's the Roman church pretty much. Matter of fact, read that. Read this there. Be, by the beginning of the fourth century. Read that there too. By the beginning of the fourth century. All this relates to class. I assure you, I'm not straying anywhere. It's, it's all relates. Watch. Yeah, I'll, I'll, bring it, I'll bring it full circle. Go ahead. By the beginning of the fourth century, the great church, or as it was also called. Watch this. The Catholic church. See? See? So the great church or, or, or Nicene Christianity is the Catholic doctrine. Is sun worship merged with Judaism? Islam is moon and stars worship merged with Judaism. So they worked so well together to sell us as slaves. Say universal. Universal. It's the universal church. It's the universal church, meaning all inclusive. All can become followers of Christ. Early Christian was an ex was an exclusive church. Catholic, the, the Nicene Council made it an inclusive church, your universal church, but all, everybody, all can become followers of Christ. All nations as Gentiles can be coming to Christ. No. Read it again. By the beginning of the fourth century, the great church, or as it was also called, the Catholic universal church. As in Catholic or i.e. the universal church. The Catholic Church is recognized as the universal church. Do not all Christian denominations of this church teach the same thing? Everybody can come in. You will come as you are. All are, all are welcome. He loves the world. God loves the world. It's the same thing. It's Nicene Christianity. Read on. Already formed about 15% of the population of the Roman Empire and was ready both numerically and structurally for its role as the church of the empire. It became the church of the empire. And guess what? It's the church of this one too. Go ahead. Becoming the state church of the Roman Empire in 380. It became the state church of the Roman Empire in 380. Why do you wonder why when the Pope comes to America, comes to New York, everything shuts down? Because his religion represents the state, the empire's church. Go ahead. However, it would be wrong to overemphasize the new externals of the church at the expense of historical continuity. It was still the same. Yeah, it's still the same church. That's all I want. They try to be deep. Whatever. Get out of this. Let's go to uh, Jewish Christians again. Let's go back. Blow it up. So I want you to read that part where it says, from the, from the latter, Nicene Christianity. So the thought, is, the thought ends there. From the latter, Nicene Christianity. Or the Catholic Church. Eventually arose. Go ahead. Which theologically. Which theologically. That's why that council, was, that council right there that they had was to go against the early Christian teachings. That's what it was for, to reject the teachings of Christ of the original disciples and their disciples. That was the whole purpose of that council. Evil niggas. Saying to hell with that law, let's get that out of here, let's worship Rome, let's merge together, let's bring everybody into the faith, everybody. Who was against that? Let's have them killed and outlawed, make it illegal. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Which theologically rejected Jewish Christians. And had us killed or locked up or persecuted. Go ahead. Often with physical violence. Often with what? Physical violence. They killed us. The same thing that the Pharisees and Sadducees did with the Christ and the disciples. Same exact thing done to us in the Dark Ages. Go ahead. Because wow. these guys, Holy Roman, the Holy Roman Empire, was a bunch of niggas ruling over Rome. They took over Rome and became Romans themselves. And started killing their own brothers who were following Christ. Like the Pharisees and scribes of old before them. It's the same wicked Negroes coming back again and again. Nothing or no one new under the sun. Read on. While mainstream Judaism developed into rabbinic Judaism. Then why, then why, which is mainstream Judaism, developed into what? 
rabbinic Judaism. Into fake modern Judaism. So you have Judaism was corrupted by white folk, and they made, and they made it their own. And then the woman, the, the white man took over the Catholic Church again, and then he corrupted the Christian faith, and it became Christianity. So you have Judaism corrupted by the heathens. Niggas start with Negroes first, who were heathen minded. Then Edom took over from there. Edom said, "Thank you, I take it from there," and and corrupted Christ, the Christian faith. And then so called came along and corrupted the freaking Judaic, the Judaism, um, Judaic faith. The Mosaic faith was corrupted. Go ahead. Read from the top again, from the ladder. One more time. Yes, sir. From the ladder, Nicene Christianity eventually arose, which theologically rejected Jewish Christians, often with physical violence, while Main Street Judaism developed into rabbinic Judaism. Watch this. Jewish Christians drifted apart from mainstream Judaism. Watch this. Eventually becoming a minority strand. We're eventually becoming a what? Minority strand. Because they were killing us. We heard earlier that the numbers increased exceedingly in Acts. And no numbers didn't, didn't dwindle when the, the temple was destroyed. When the temple was destroyed, the numbers grew more because Christ already warned the people, listen, Rome would have come, persecute us, overthrow us, and that increased the faith of them more because Christ had foresaw it and taught to the disciples. The disciples are teaching it, and so the, the faith increased even more after 70 AD. So it might even say it. They might even say it. Keep going. Which had mostly disappeared by the 5th century and did not emerge again until the 20th century. Did it emerge again until what? The 20th century. To the 20th century. Go ahead. Jewish Christian gospels have been lost except for fragments. So there is considerable uncertainty as to the scriptures used by this group. No, there isn't. It's very certain it was the Bible. That's it. Keep going. The split of Christianity and Judaism took place during the first century's common era, while the first Jewish-Roman war and the destruction of the second temple in 70 common era were main events. Well, the main events that what? The separation was a long-term process in which the boundaries were not clear cut. But so it says here, that's the split of Christianity and Judaism took place during the first centuries AD. So, so that CE is nonsense. AD, while the first Jewish Roman war and the destruction of the temple, 70 AD, were main events. The separation was a long term process in which the boundaries were not clear cut. So the, the doctrine of Christ and Judaism eventually split apart because pagans took over both. Pagans took over the doctrine of Christ, which was, which was Judaic Christianity. And then doc, pagans took over Judaism alone, without the doctrine of Christ. Just Mosaic Judaism alone was taken by pagans as well, heathen, Edomites. So both were, so both in the long run were corrupted. That's the that's the conclusion. So now, go back, go up now, scroll up some. Click quarto decimate. See what that means. Read that regarding um, early Christians observed. Read that. Quarto decimanism. Quarto decimanism. Quarto decimanism. Go ahead. Um, meaning 14. Right. Quarto decimanism. Quart as in four. Decima as in December. 10, that's 14. 10 plus 4. That's 14. Quarto decimanism. Go ahead. Refers to the custom of early Jewish Christians. Of, of who? Of early Jewish Christians. Early. Not latter. Early. Go ahead. Observing the Eucharist. They call it Eucharist. The Catholic Church deemed calls that Eucharist. The Eucharist cookie. They call Eucharist cookie. Eucharist cookie is some nonsense. Where they get their little um little boys, they rape cookies and all that, make their butt salt soft. Whatever they do, whatever the hell it's damn for. Damn, damn pedophiles. <laughs> Read it again. Christian observing what? Refers to the custom of early Jewish Christians <laughs> observing. I'm sorry, observing yeah, the racist, Eucharist, man. Lord's Supper, as the Jewish Passover, Pesach. Beginning, beginning with the eve of the 14th day of the sun, called a bib. In, in pre exilic times. Right, so it was called the month of bib prior to us going into captivity. And he named the one from a bib, Nisan, based upon Babylon. Go ahead. In Hebrew Bible calendar, according to the practice commanded by the Torah. Right, so we kept basically the, the early Christians or followers of Christ kept Passover. That's a law. Watch, gonna say it. Judaism reckons the beginning of each day at sunset. Sundown. Judaism reckons the beginning of each day at sundown. Watch. Referencing Leviticus 
Chapter 23, verse 32. 32. Watch this. Evening until evening. Oh, evening until evening. Watch. Not at sunrise. Not when? At sunrise. I found this today. Not at sunrise. Go ahead. As is the custom of European, European traditions. traditions. So you got dumb Negroes leave up out of here. They revert right back to the same Nicene customs. European traditions. Not sunrise. Sunrise to sunrise is a European tradition, not an Israelite tradition. Damn. Keep going. The Jewish feast of unleavened bread, Passover. I'm still waiting for them sunrise, sunrise um, congregations. I'm still trying. Wait, where you guys at? Where you guys at? I'm trying to find you. Right. You guys have to out of here. Yeah, you guys are off at sunrise. Where's your sunrise congregations at? Read that, please. The Jewish feast of unleavened bread. I'm not, letting you guys, I'm not gonna stop giving you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all every time I teach. I'm gonna mention you because you should be because we're wicked as hell. We're the devil. Your sunrise, your sunrise congregation should be in the, in the highest numbers because we're wrong and you're right. Read that, please. The Jewish feast of the Jewish feast of unleavened bread, Passover, last seven days. Leviticus chapter twenty-three, verse six. We know this. Go ahead. Starting with the sunset. Starting when? With the sunset. No, sunrise. Sunset. Oh, okay. Go ahead. At the beginning of the 15th day of the month, Nisan. Because it's the same day. It's sundown, 15th day. Go ahead. In Exodus, God's instructions. No, no, man's instructions. God's instructions. Oh, okay, good. Go ahead. Are that the Passover setter was to be eaten at twilight or midnight, but this was not the end of the 14th day. Go ahead. The Hebrew biblical law. Hold on. The Hebrew what? Biblical law. The Hebrew biblical law. Go ahead. Regarding Passover. It's said to be what? It's said to be a perpetual ordinance. It's to not stop. It's not done away with. Ever. It's a perpetual ordinance. <sighs> That's all I want. That's all I want. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 728. 2nd Ezra 728. Y'all make it hard for you. That's why you don't stop watching us. Because you can't stop watching us. Because you don't know what you're talking about when you teach. Because you're morons and defectors. Second Ezra 7, verse 28. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 28. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. Those that be with him is referring to the disciples, a.k.a. apostles. Disciples or apostles. Go ahead. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Within 400 years after this time period of Persia, Rome rose up and Christ was born during that time period. That's what I'm talking about. Hold on to that. I'm done with those that be with him. Give me page 152 of the book. Now I'm going to show you all. Wikipedia is not a valid source. You can edit that. And, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to go in the book now. So you can shut your mouth and be, and be, be, be quiet and learn. I read this all the time. This is page 152. Go down to the, go on, go to the highlighter part. So I want, even while. Results of, just read the results of Paul's teachings. Yes, sir. The results of Paul's teachings. It is not what happened to Paul's person, Paul personally that is important, but rather what happened to Paul's teachings. Even while he lived, ample evidence proved that the people to whom he preached had misunderstood him. So it says, it is not what happened to Paul personally that is important, but what had to happen to his teachings. That's important to understand. We going. Even while he lived what? Even while he lived, ample evidence proved that the people to whom he preached had misunderstood him. Why? Get first Peter now. First Peter 3. You know what I want. This is why. Like a lot of you Christians, what do you Christians, what do Christians do today? What do Nicene Christians do today? Nicene Christians? What Paul, Paul said. I don't even care what Christ says. What but Paul? Junior Greek. Ain't that what y'all do? Jew and Gentile. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. Yep. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Right, because Peter is going to explain um, regarding Paul's letter. Watch this. His Paul's letters, watch this. As also in all his epistles. As also in all Paul's letters. Go ahead. Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. Or misunderstood. There's some things in Paul's letters that can be misunderstood. Watch this. Why? 
which they that are unlearned and unstable. They that are unlearned and are not truly believers. They're unstable. They're, their faith wavers. They're not, they're not steadfast in this faith. Beyond, regarding in their mind, they misunderstand Paul's letters. They're unlearned, unstable. Go ahead. They rest. Go ahead. Rest. Wrestle. I mean, they fight. Well, maybe Paul meant this. Paul's con- Paul is contradicting, contradicting himself. He says this in one verse, but says that in another. The hell makes sense. You know what? The hell, Paul. Paul's, Paul's letters are the word of God. That's not, that's not God's word. That's Paul's words. You start hearing that after a while because they're unlearned and unstable. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures. As they do also the other scriptures, as in the Old Testament. Go ahead. Until their own destruction. Until their own destruction. Because that leads to Old Testament only Israelites. That's what that leads to. It leads to that. All right, now. But read on. Read the next verse. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye beware. also. Beware. You know these things that Paul says are hard to, to, hard to understand. Beware what? Lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfast. Fall from your what? From your own steadfast. So to understand Paul's letters, you must be steadfast. Give me the definition of steadfast, please. To understand Paul's letters, you must be steadfast. Or you're going to fall into the error of the wicked. But they say Paul is not gospel. God don't deal with Paul like that. There's just, there's just writings. See that? Steadfast. Resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. See? Those who are unlearned and unstable rest. Those who are steadfast are unlearned and not, are not stable. Resol- resolutely or dutifully, dutifully firm and unwavering. Read the synonyms. Click the, click the arrow, please. I like these words here regarding steadfast. Loyal. Stop. Woo. Loyal. When you're not steadfast in this truth, what do you become? Disloyal. What do you become? What, what do disloyal niggas become? Traitors. Defectors. Detractors. Delinquents. So being steadfast and loyal are synonymous now. So we read the word steadfast in the Bible, that goes right back to being loyal. Right back to being loyal. Read on. Faithful. Faithful goes back to being loyal. Go ahead. Committed. Committed. That's why when people leave about these doors, they go, oh, the law's done away with. You can eat chicken and rice on the Passover. You can have pot, pot, hot pockets. You niggas are retarded, man. I'm a, I mock every class. I mock you because I enjoy it. It's fun to me. I can see your anger on the screen now. I can love it. I'm, I'm tasting your tears. They nourish me. Read that. Devoted, dedicated, dependable, dependable, reliable, reliable. They don't leave. I'm mad. I'm leaving. You're not reliable. You're a hireling. You're emotional. Go ahead. Steady. Steady. Going back to being steadfast. Go ahead. True. Constant. Staunch. Trust. You can trust them. Go ahead. Firm. Firm. Determined. Resolute. Resolutely. Stalwart. Go ahead. Stout. Relentless. And implacable. Single-minded, unchanging. Unchanging. You come into these doors, sundown, sundown is the day. You leave these doors, sunrise, sunrise is the day. You're not unchanging. That ain't talking about you. Go ahead. Unwavering. Unwavering. Unhesitating. Unfaltering. Unswerving. Unyielding. Unflinching. Inflexible. Uncompromising. What these words go with? Being austere. That's what Christ, all these synonyms right here is what Christ was. He was all that. All these things here. Read the opposite of that. Disloyal. See? I don't make this up. When you're not steadfast, you become disloyal. 
You go on YouTube, do little sh- short clips. Yeah, you I see is the devil. Yeah, you're wicked. Yeah, because you ain't steadfast. Then you start joining up with your enemies. You start filing, You start talking with apologetics. Yeah, yeah. Are you Israelites are a cult? What are you? I'm an Israelite too. But we're a cult. But you're an Israelite. Yeah, they're a cult. Yeah. You become disloyal. You become irresol- irresolute. Irresolute. Cut the um, translations down. See what it says? Go down. It says steadfast. Yes, it's all. It's just one word put together. All right. Steadfast, stead and fast. Right. Standing firm. Standing firm. Old English. Stand firm. So those who don't stand firm, Paul's letters, they're like, ah, I, don't, I don't believe in Paul because you ain't, you ain't steadfast. Now, go back to that book again. Let's continue. Even while he lived, ample evidence proves that the people to whom he preached had misunderstood him. they were not steadfast. Go ahead. He had spoken in terms of high and noble I- idealism. 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 Of charity. Love your neighbor as yourself. Going back to Corinthians, his letters in Corinthians. Charity, go ahead. Of personal righteousness. Of personal righteousness. Personal righteousness. Going into what? Into application of God's laws. Personal righteousness. Watch, he's going to say it. Watch. He urged men to believe in Jesus firmly. He urged people, men and women, to believe in Christ firmly. Go ahead. And? And believing in so perfect an example of godly living. Living in an example of godly living. How? By keeping the commandments. You can't have that without commandments. Go ahead. Begin to lead a godly life themselves. Go ahead. Such righteous people could have no difficulty in meeting the awful day of God's judgment. Because they're keeping the commandments of God. They're living, they have a godly living as the Messiah walked in. Go ahead. They would surely survive it. They would survive God's day of judgment. Go ahead. And when the day of resurrection came. The day comes time to be brought back from the dead. Such. Such. People. Such people would. Such people would surely be permitted to live again and, and forever. forever. Watch. But most of the people who what? listened. But most of the people who listened to Paul remembered only the connection between believing in Jesus and meriting God's mercy. And ultimate resurrection. What's left out? They skipped well, the middle step. They skipped skip what? They skipped the middle step. Which is what? The need to live godly lives. No commandments. See what happened? See what happened? Because they were unwavering. It says the people remembered. It says, move back to the screen. They remembered only the connection between believing in Christ and mercy. What do you hear all the time of Christians? Grace, mercy, grace, grace, mercy, grace, grace. I believe, believe, just believe in Christ. Just believe. We all for short believe. Believe out. Commandments, though. No, 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 not that. Leave that out. Just believe, and God will give you mercy. But Paul said, live godly lives. Read on. Thus, faith in Jesus came to be the only. Stop, stop. Faith in Jesus came to be the only, go ahead, and entire basis of the religion. Adopted by who? Adopted by the pagan Christians. By pagan Christians. That's you Christians that go to church tomorrow, the celebrate New Year's, and Christmas last week, you're pagan Christians. You're Nicene Christians. That's you. Those that live about these doors, that counsel with the heat with the other with the enemy, apologetics, you're pagan Christian too. Go ahead. Thus, faith in Jesus came to be the only an entire basis of the religion. So faith only is a doctrine of pagan Christians. Go ahead. By the pagan Christians. While the Judeo Christians stop. While Judeo Christians, going back to what? The Jewish Christians or early Christians, um, pre-Nicene Christian era. Go ahead. Who lived in Palestine, continue to observe the Jewish, Jewish law. law. We are the bombs. I'm just joking. I'm just joking with you. I'm just joking. <laughs> Boom. 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 Continue to observe Jewish law. Judeo-Christians continue to observe Jewish law. 
in faith of Christ. Go ahead. But it was the pagan Christian But attitude. it was the pagan Christian what? Attitude. Which won in the end. Which won today. It won. Because the early Christians became what? We read earlier, the minority. They faced physical violence. It was illegal. It was outlawed to be a Judeo-Christian under the Roman Empire. And then in Spain and Portugal, again, it became outlawed again. And it will so be again here in this place. Go ahead. Many pagans who had admired Judaism. Many pagans like Constantine, the, the, the creator of the Council of Nicaea, who, who what? Who admired Judaism. Go ahead. Either openly or secretly, now had a chance to adopt a form of Judaism. I had a chance to adopt a form of Judaism. Go ahead. Which appealed to them. Which appealed to their feelings. I believe, I have faith in mercy, believe God, New Year's, Christmas. Thanksgiving. Go ahead. It is not at all strange that Christianity spread most easily and rapidly in those cities in which Jews had lived for a long time so that people were already acquainted with their life and religious ideals. Go ahead. Nevertheless, for some centuries still, it was not at all certain whether Judaism or Christianity would make the greater number of converts. Is that it? That's, That's it. it. So, again, our people who observe Sunday worship tomorrow, New Year's today, or yesterday, whatever, and Christmas last week, you're Nicene, or you're pagan Christians, or, you're, or you are Catholics. You're a denomination of Catholic. That's all it is. Whether you call yourself Protestant, Calvinistic, Calvinist, Protestant, Catholic, you're all the same. Pentecostal, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, you're all Pagan Christians, all of you. Give me um Second Kings two, verse one. So you always had the true doctrine, and you always had the opposing doctrine. Always. The book of Second Kings, chapter two, verse one. And it goes around, was around. Second Kings two and one. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto, I'm sorry, and Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Mm -hmm. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? So the, the sons of who? And the sons of the prophets. Stop. The sons of the prophets were Elijah and Elisha's students. These were Elijah and Elisha's disciples. Now say it again. Elijah would be what you would call a bishop. And Elisha would be called what you refer to as a deacon. And the sons of the prophets would be the disciples of these two. That's what these guys are, all right? Sons of the Prophets was the, pretty much their school. And we're going to get that in a minute. I went, over, I went over this before in the class called Walking in the Footsteps, Walking in the footsteps of Elijah. Walking in Elijah's Footsteps. You know I'm sorry, I'm butchering it. Walking in Elijah's Footsteps. I went over this. I'm going to go to it again today. Just to give you the clear um, parallels of, of then and today regarding schools of learning being set up and schools of learning being persecuted then and now. Read verse 3 again. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. So he said, I know it. Be quiet. I know this. He's gonna, I know he's going to leave us soon. I don't want to hear that. Now this said, Sons of God which, came, which were at Bethel. The sons of the prophets which were at Bethel. So this is a school in Bethel right here. Read on. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I would not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Now they go to Jericho. They, leave, they leave, left Bethel, now they're in Jericho. Go ahead. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha. And another set of students in the school at Jericho came to Elisha and said what? And said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? 
And he answered, yay, I know it. Hold ye your peace. So that, that shows you that all the prophets here were in one spirit. The spirit revealed to the students in Bethel. Elijah's going to leave you today. Let's just say, I don't want to hear that. Then the spirit revealed it to the students in Jericho. The Lord going to leave you. Let's just say, I don't want to hear that, man. <laughs> Be quiet, because Elijah loved Elijah. He loved him. He said, okay, I, I know. Go ahead. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. Now he's going to go to Jordan. Go ahead. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I would not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they, and they too stood by Jordan. Uh -huh, fifty of the sons of the prophets came. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped the mantle will be what you see. If you watch Star Wars, they wear that brown little cloak with the hoodie and the cape. That's a mantle. That's where they get these ideas from. No, don't think that this man's a genius and writes these things. Oh, no, that's Bible. Jedi, Judah, that's Bible. The Jedi was us. That's us. That's just, these guys will be Jedis, biblically. And they wore the same thing. They wore a the white garment, lightsaber or sword in this instance. And they had a, um, the brown hoodie with the cape hanging from the hoodie. That's a mantle. All right? So it's basically a hooded cape. A, hood, a mantle is a hooded cape. All right? Matter of fact, get a picture of that real fast so everybody can see it. Jedi. Okay, what the hell? Jedi. What the hell is this? J-E-D-I. Oh, God. Oh, geez. oh, God, man. Who's spelling these things? Thank you. All right. There you go. Hey, this... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> go to the, the down the bottom with the, the guy standing on the bottom, the little figure right there with the sword. Lightsaber in his hand. Yeah. Pull that up. Right there. See, that's, that's the mantle. With the hood, collected to that's like a mantle. It's a hooded mantle. That's, there you go. And this, this, there you go. So just ignore the, uh, the paleness. All right. But go on out of there now. The best black Jedi we have was uh, Samuel Jackson, Mace Window. He dies. Terrible. We can't have nothing. We can't have nothing. Anyway, go out of there. Killed by an old man. Can't make this up. Where we at? Uh, 2 Kings 2, 1, verse 8. Yeah, read that. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither. So he smote the, damn. So he, Elijah smote the waters, and the waters divided. He did a Moses. He smote the, in the, in the Jordan, smote the damn Jordan River and split it in two. Divided. Go ahead. And they, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry so the water, ground. They walked on dry ground. The water moved, and they divided the river entirely in half. And walked on dry ground. That's the power Elijah had. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon thee. Elisha said, I want the spirit you have and double. I want twice as much the power you have. Go ahead. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And took Elijah away. Go ahead. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Mm -hmm. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Called, Elisha his father, called Elijah his father. Go ahead. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Go ahead. Verse 13, he took up also the mantle of Elijah. He that took up that same hood from Elijah. Go ahead. That fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He went by, so he put on Elijah's, this is bad. He put on Elijah's mantle now. Go ahead. That fell from him when he got taken. Go ahead. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, had, when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Damn. And Elisha got the power that has Elder left him. Go ahead. Next verse, 15. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. See, they saw it. The spirit of him. Go ahead. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Damn. That's a bad scene in the movie. That'd be bad. And animate that. Animate, animate that. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the um, blue highlight pages. The blue pages, the pictures that are highlighted, highlighted in blue. I want those. Right, 
right, y'all gonna have to blow this up. Yeah, because it's, it's written crazy. It's written small. All right, move it over. Yep, right there. Yo, gal. Remember we read earlier that? That's good. The sons of the prophets visited him in Bethel. They visited him in Jericho, and then by the River Jordan. There's a school in Gilgal, too. Go ahead, read that. Gilgal, or Gilgal, or Gagala, was another of their schools. Of their what? Of their schools. Go up some. Scroll up some, scroll up some, scroll up some. This is their school, their school. Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Let me see if it shows, mentions them. Right there, prophets who? Prophets Elijah and Elisha often visited this city. Often visited this city. Go ahead. For here was the nurse, nursery for scripture learning. Here was the nursery for scripture learning. Go ahead. Where the sons of the prophets were addicted to that study. To the stem. We didn't even highlight this. We didn't even highlight this part. We didn't highlight this part. No, sir, I'm sorry. The prophets, that's all, that's all right. The prophets, religion, Elijah, often visited the city, for here was the nursery for scripture learning, where the sons of the prophets were addicted steadfast to that study. Let's get that real quick. Addicted, addicted, get that real quick. Addicted, uh, mm, addicted, I don't have that written down. Addicted. First Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16, 15. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 15. Sure that, this, that this thought that, uh, has parallels. I'm showing you. Go ahead. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus. Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Archaea. This house, the first, these are the guys that are the first ones to learn or, come, or become the disciples out in Archaea. Go ahead, the first fruits. Go ahead. And that they have addicted themselves. To the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Go back to this now. It says, prophets, El Elijah and Elisha, often visited this city. For here was the nursery for scripture learning, where the sons of the prophets were addicted to that study. Come on. It had a mountain eastward of it, and such little mountain and hills at a convenient distance. Do somewhat hinder and keep back over sharp, blasting, vaporous, over piercing, over cold, or over over uh wise otherwise hurtful. otherwise hurtful winds, it flood upon a, it flood upon a mount the eminence of the habitation being best approved for health and for the prolonging of life, the air there being the more open and the breathing therefore the more free, the apter to engender an acuteness and generousness, a publicness and magnificent of mind, whereas. When the dwellings of studious men are in crooked and close, in low and feeny countries, those who are of a retired, sedent, sedent, sedentary, pondering and inquiring life are greatly incommoded thereby, being of a more dull and drowsy, sluggish and uh, lazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go down to the point. Do now. So it's Elijah, Elijah so much. They're going to get to the atmosphere and how the like air food. was good and fresh, which is fine. We're going to get to the point. Elijah and Alicia often visited this area and they would, Teach their students, the sons of the prophets. Go ahead now. So now it tells you what, what this place is called, Gilgal. Go ahead. Gilgal or Gilgal. Well, I, no, no, that was uh, Bethel. That's Bethel. It's talking about Bethel there, I believe. The God of the house of God, the house of God, Beth, right, even, right. whatever. Now, this is Gilgal here. So remember, it's, it's showing you uh, um, all this, the places of, it's, this page is showing you all the locations of which the sons of the prophets were being taught. Elijah Elisha opened up schools of learning in these areas. Bethel was the first one you listed up here. Now you have Gilgal right here. Go ahead. Gilgal, or Gilgal, or Gilgala, was another of their schools. There was a plain over against it, which shows that it had an open and free air. It was not, it was not far from the River Jordan. Here, Saul was made king. And Here David Saul was made king in the same area. Go ahead. And David also was received again to his kingdom. Samuel, a priest, prophet, and judge, yearly visited this place. Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha, go ahead. Two old prophets. Two, by this time they're old, go ahead. Were, if not presidents. Well, not both of them, but by this time they're old, go ahead. Were, if not presidents of this college. They were president. but oh, we had again? If not presidents of what? Elijah and Elisha, two old prophets. Were, if not presidents of this college. Two old prophets means the prophets of old. Two old prophets were what? And if not what? If not presidents of this college. It was a college. It's called a college. 
Y'all think the, this, this, this Edomite man, this European man is the founder of all things. No, he's not. We had schools, we had universities, we had college, we had schools of learning. Go ahead. Yet, at the least, visitors of it. They were, if, not, if they were not presidents of the college, they were at least the visitors of it to make sure it was being, the, the, the teachers were doing their job. Go ahead. To examine how the sons and students profited there. See? To see how they were doing. Go ahead. To instruct, reform, and to put all into good order. Put all into what? Good order. They put all in good order. They have set up, they establish order in the churches. Give me, um, I don't this written down either. Give me, um, you holding your order? Colossians 2 and 5. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Join and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Ah, that word again. And the steadfastness of your faith or your loyalty in the faith uh, in Christ, of your faith in Christ. Get 1 Corinthians um, 1440. I'm going to do it in order. No, no. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 34. I'm going to do it in order. The book of... 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 34. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. The rest I'll set in order, the rules, regulations of that, when I get there. I will set in order. Uh, 1440, same book. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. All things and where? The churches. Go to um, 1523. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. 16, verse 1. Same book. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order, to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so must you do. What Galatia does, you do. Referring to who? Referring to the um, Corinthians. That's all I want. So read on. Uh, for there, they sat before these rectors on lower seats. They sat before these rectors on lower seats. Go ahead. To hear what? To hear instructions as disciples. At the feet of their masters and teachers and tutors. See, it says they there sat before their rectors on lower, in lower seats to hear the instructions as disciples, to hear instructions as disciples. The sons of the prophets were the disciples of Elijah and Elisha. Go ahead. They sat to the faces of their instructor. This scripture expression of the sons sitting to the faces of the old prophets, Elisha, doth speak out such a useful truth as gives a very apt direction both to teacher and to scholars in order to both his instructing and disciplining of them and their regular demeanor before him and growing profiting by him. I mean, he made certain, he looked, he's going to say what, what it means by that we, we, we later on. Watch, the older the, prophet. The old prophet shows himself in a higher seat above them. So the older prophet shows himself in a higher seat above them. I mean, they're all sitting beneath, at his feet, so they're below, lower seats, watch. Some tower of wood. So there was a tower of wood. Watch, go ahead. In our English, tongue and language, we call it a pulpit. A uh, well, base of wood. He stood upon, go ahead. Because it is set in a public place, in open view, where the teacher may be seen and heard of all who come thither to be keshized. Catechized. Catechized. Meaning educated um, scripturally. Scripturally educated. Catechized. Then be pulpit. You see these pastors stand by them big pulpits of wood and so forth, but the audience be a, a, be a in the Christian church, you oftentimes see a mega church, you oftentimes see um, they'll have the, 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 the um, people in the churches sitting above them. But it's supposed to be under them, not above. See those damn Madison churches. Not all of them, but I, I see that before. Pulpit, pulpit, there's the images. Like that. That's an example of wood, the pulpit of wood. Don't get that Catholic one. That's... 
You see that? You oftentimes see that. See? Right there. That's good. That one there. Get that right there. No, no, no. no. Below. Go to the right. Yep, right, right there. Right. Nope, that one. Not that one. That one. Yep, that one. Hold up. That's how it was, except without the mic. So you had Elijah and Alicia. They would stand there and teach the people. You, up, you see that in colleges, universities sometimes, and you see it in churches. That's where it comes from. We had this, we had this understanding already. Or a desk. A high desk. A pulpit of wood is basically a high desk. You put your Bible there. It's a shelf under. You see a shelf under there. It's a desk, like we do in our congregations. We sit above up the people. The people sit below. That's the order. Watch. Keep going. Schools of learning. Go back up. Yeah. Go back to the book now. Um, yeah, from says, whence, uh, catechized from whence the master. From whence the master praiseth and blesseth. From which the master praiseth and blesseth. We stand up prayers, anoint the people, same thing. Go ahead. Pray it and make up supplication See? for grace unto Jehovah, the great Elohim. Whilst the scholars lift up their hands and eyes, bowing their heads. Stop. See how they pray? Lift up their hands and eyes, bowing their heads. They didn't have their hands put together. That's how we pray. That's garbage. Go ahead. And worshiping Jehovah with faces toward the earth. Hands up, face toward the earth. That's how the prayers are sent up. Go ahead. The master readeth in the book, the Bible, the book of books. The master readeth in the book, the Bible, the book of books. Go ahead. The scripture, the truth, taking some part of the law of Elohim out of the book of Moses or of the books of the prophets. Or of the writings of the evangelists and apostles. Or the writings of who? Of, or the writings of the evangelists and apostles. Go ahead. This he readeth, for reading is an ordinance of Christ. And he, uh, readeth it, he readeth it distinctly, so as to expound it in the proper significancy of its words and phrases. Nehemiah 8 and 8. This is, a lot, this is what Elijah Lister was doing. Give me a Nehemiah 8 and 8. They read it distinctly so as to expound it in the proper significancy, significancy of its words and phrases. Like, for example, Jews and Gentiles, going back to Hosea 1, going back to Isaiah 10.22, Hosea 2.23, that's me bringing it out distinctly. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. Distinctly. That's what Ezra and um, Nehemiah was doing. Go ahead. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And caused the disciples, to make disciples, to make disciples understand it. Go back to this again. This is, this is, this is clear, clear, obvious. To, uh, to make the disciples to understand it by a declaration of all the parts and opening the meaning. And opening the meaning, whether it be one meaning, two-fold meaning, three-fold meaning. Opening the meaning, go ahead. And he gives the sense. And he gives the sense, Nehemiah 8 and 8. And he gives the sense, because sense is given by the Bible, nor the book. Go ahead. He put an accurate... Um, in industry. Industry, yes. Sorry, he put in accurate industry and intent mind, dil diligent study, uh -huh. and considerate inspection to see well to it, that no one word were misinterpreted. Not no one word are misinterpreted. Go ahead. Thereby to cause the learn to cur the learning the learners the learners inwardly to consider in their mind with a certain disposition, disposition. and judgment to judge aright to judge a to do what when they learn the Bible to judge aright to judge. You learn how to judge, all right? Go ahead. Inwardly to discern. And you're able to understand. The Bible helps you to understand. Go ahead. Accurately to perpend. What's that word mean? De de define perpend. Don't that word mean? Perpend. Uh, per pen. Go down. That's not the right definition. Go down. Get the arcade. Yeah. 
What does it say? What does it mean to propend? Put that. To ref- there you go. Right there. To reflect on carefully. To re- be to that. Uh, to ponder. In, uh, intrusive. To be. To be attentive. Reflect. Reflect. That's what it means to, pre- to propend. To be, to reflect on carefully, to be attentive, to pay attention. So let me tell y'all, take notes, pay attention. Don't just stare at us. Pay attention, take notes. So prepend means to pay attention, to accurately, to prepend, and to duly, and duly to weigh. Got more? Let's get some more. And duly to weigh. Right, get some more. Go on to the next, next highlighted blue, next blue highlighted parts of this book. Bishop, you have this book. You don't have to ask me for <laughs> Bishop, you have this. I think you have this book. And they're going to ask me later on. You have it. <laughs> I'm about to send it. Hold on, hold on. All right. If you don't have this book, I'm going to get cursed out. I hope he has it. I think he has it. <laughs> I think he has it. Give us a moment. Got a page. Very important page. So again, I'm just showing y'all, the, I'm showing y'all the, the parallels regarding how you had the, the elders, disciples. There was always order. There was always someone to be taught. There was always someone that had to learn from someone. There was never, oh, I'm gonna do my own thing. The, the spirit will guide me. That's not in the Bible. It's not scriptural. It's not scriptural. Did y'all get the page? The Ruach, the Ruach Kodesh. One second. That's what y'all think. All right. There it is. All right. What up? Yeah, start right here. Let's just get the. Uh, don't just start. Uh, yeah, read from the, the top part. Just read. There are two cheeks. The color does come and go. No, no, no. There, there are variety. These varieties of of countenances. No, no. The, there are two cheeks to go. No, no. Yeah, there, there. Are these varieties of 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 um countenances. Read that. These varieties of countenances an observing scholar should take notice of. Counsel is giving by the eye and look. And and so Christ uh, counseled Peter with his eye. He gave Peter such a look as drew bitter weepings from Peter's eyes. Right. I mean, actually, he, he was um, on trial. Peter promised he wouldn't deny him, and he did deny him. Peter looked up at Christ. Um, Peter, Christ looked at Peter, and he ran off, ran off in shame. He ran off in shame. Read on. And the teacher may observe and discern by the faces of his scholars. So he's focused. So this page is focusing on how the teacher will pay close attention to the expressions of the students. In the class. So the teacher may do what? Observe. Uh, and the teacher may observe and discern by the faces of his scholars, whether whether they be intent and serious. Whether you guys are actually paying attention, whether you're being serious, taking notes, go ahead. Or not. Or you're just sitting here wasting time. That took place in the schools also. Go ahead. Whether the heart and mind be fixed, be fixedly pondering upon what the, the tutor doth instruct his pupils. So the, the teacher will make certain that what he said the students to sit there and think on what was being said. They were per- they was they were to perpend. Go ahead. Or not. Or not. Go ahead. It were easy to put a heap of scriptures together about this. If young if young sons turn the backs toward the old prophet, or if he turned the back towards them, how can he know whether they regard his instructions or not? How quickly will one idler or scoffer? Among them, put his fellows into disorder. So you had to make sure that they were paying attention so that this, there would be no chaos to arise in the class. Next highlight, the eye has a commanding. The eye has a commanding, awing, affecting aspect, aspect with, with it. it. Uh, sense, observation, and uh, experience, experience are evidence, proof, and demonstrations of these things. And therefore, also, he should be above them that none may be hid from his eye. So he had, that's why they had a pulpit. He had to be above the students so he can keep an eye on everyone in the classroom. He could see in the back of the class to the front of the class. Go ahead. There's mention made of, of Beth Gilgal. There's mention made of the House of Gilgal. Go ahead. Go the, ahead. House, the House of Gilgal of, of this college. Of this college. Go ahead. More eminently. 
where priests and Levites dwelt after their return to Jerusalem from their captivity in Babylon. They returned to school. Go ahead. Thus, uh, this college of the prophets also was in the tribe of Benjamin, a great honor put upon that tribe. That's where Paul was made the king. Go ahead. And this Gilgal was in the very heart and middle of the land of Judea. And this academy. And this what? In this academy. And that was an academy now. In this academy. Go ahead. Or seminary of learning. Or seminary of learning. Not the garbage you learn now. But this is a seminary here. Go ahead. The sons of the prophets. The sons of the prophets. Go ahead. As scholars were educated. They were educated in these places. Go ahead. Who exercised themselves in the study of the Hebrew scripture. Go ahead. If who? who if, if he who went in. Out into the field to gather pot, pot herbs. That's going into the poison of the pot. That's the death in the pot. Go down, go down, go down. <laughs> right here. This college. This college was. No, stop from over here. Start from. That's fine. Uh, the old prophet Elisha healed and cured the pottage of its poisonfulness. Go to this college. This college was afterwards greatly corrupted with idolatry. The college of Elisha was eventually was eventually what? Corrupted with idolatry. Corrupted with idolatry. Go ahead. And superstition. And superstition. Go ahead. For so is the design of idolatrous princes to taint and defile the universities. Wicked Negroes. Hot pockets on the Passover, sunrise, Sabbaths, drugs. Now you can do drugs now. <sighs> defile, defile the idolatrous princes, taint and defile the universities. Go ahead. From thence to send forth young scholars. To infect the people. Then they would send, they would have informants in the schools to infect the rest of the students. Go ahead. To infect the people where they come with false doctrines. False doctrines. And worship. Uh huh. Which was more poisonful, contagious, and potential to souls than the aforementioned wild vine would have been to no, the pestilential, body. More pestilential. Sorry, to souls. More pestilential to souls. And more destructive, pestilential. More pestilential to souls. Go ahead. Than the aforementioned wild vine would have been to the body. Meaning was, he's saying that you had people who destroyed the congregations or the churches, which was more poisonous than the pot that Elisha cured, the death in the pot. Basically comparing you evil Negroes to death in the pot in the schools. You're wor that's worse than the death in the pot is what he's saying. Which have been, says which have been what? It was a... Uh, well mentioned wild vine, which have been to what? Uh, the then body. the aforementioned wild vine would have been to the body. It was a place of... It was a place of public conventions. Right. So I want. Give me um, Watson's Dictionary now. Watson's Dictionary. Let me go, go back to the scriptures again. First Kings 18. Give me First Kings 18 while we read this. Before we get this. Give me Watson's Dictionary. Page 765. Bishop uses this all the time and shout out Tuesdays. Page 765 and 766 to show that what we're doing, we're not a cult, we're not insane, we know exactly what we're doing. Read that there. Some of them open schools. Some of them open schools or houses of instruction. Meaning colleges, universities, or academies. Same thing. Sons of the prophets. Go ahead. And there too, their disciples, uh, they taught the pure religion of Moses. And there too, their disciples, they taught the pure religion of Moses. Go ahead. At uh, Naoth, in the suburbs of Ramah, there was one where Samuel dwelt. Samuel had a school where he lived. Go ahead. And there was one at Jericho and a third at Bethel, to which Elijah and Elisha often resorted. See, different books saying the same thing. Go ahead. Thither, the people went on Sabbath days at new moons and at new moons and received public lessons of piety and morality. They went there on Sabbath days and new moons and received public lessons of piety and morality. They learned the commandments and kept feast days there, like you do here, like you're doing, like some of y'all are doing now, if your school's open. Many of the... Many of the discourses were preached in camps Maybe and you, Whoa, 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 whoa. Preached where? Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts. Uh-huh. In streets. Where? In streets. In streets. Where else? Schools. We taught in schools. Cities. Villages. Sometimes with great composure and coolness. So some taught real calm and cool. Go ahead. That composure. Go ahead. And other times with vehement action and rapturous energy. Some teach with high energy. Go ahead. Sometimes in a plain, blunt style. Some teach in a plain, blunt style. 
I mean, they just don't give a damn. They just curse you the hell out like lava. <laughs> Go ahead. At other times, in in a plan. Other oh, times, Malachi trouble too. Go ahead. <laughs> at other times, in all the magnificent pomp of Eastern allegory. Go ahead. On some occasions, the preachers appeared in public with with visible signs. They appeared in public with visible signs or posters. Nothing new under the sun. Go ahead. With implements of war. With what? With implements of war. With symbols of war. Go ahead. With yokes of slavery. They had, they had yokes of slavery. We, or we have posters of us in yokes of slavery. We have that. Go ahead. Or something adapted to their subject. Or something adapted to what they're talking about. They hold the sign up and talk about slavery. Uh, have an image of them with a yoke of iron on his neck. Talk, the slave trade, they show an image of a map. But it's still images. They showed images of what they were talking about. While they taught in open areas, in public places. That's what the prophets and sons of the prophets were taught to do. So if you're sitting on a computer, by a, on a key, behind a keyboard, on Facebook or YouTube, you're not on these streets, God is not dealing with you. Go ahead. They gave lectures on these, held them up to view, girded them on, broke them in pieces. Rent their garments, rolled in the dust, and endeavored by all the... Mean they were animated or expressed physically what they were talking about. By all the methods they could devise, agreeably to the customs of their country, to impress the minds of their auditors. Those, on, those listening, the onlookers, those listening, the audience, go ahead. With the nature and importance of their doctrines. Watch this. These men were highly esteemed by the pious part of the nation. And princes thought proper to keep seers and others who were scribes, who read and expounded the law. Let's go down. Right here. When the Jews were carried captive into Babylon, the prophets who were with them inculcated the principles of religion and endeavored to possess their minds with an aversion to idolatry. And to the success of preaching, we may attribute the reconversion of the Jews to the belief and worship of one God. By coming out of Babylon, they had to be reconverted again. They, were adopted, they adopted the Babylonian customs, like when Nehemiah and Ezra and Zerubbabel and Joshua had to reform the people all over again. Watch this. Houses were? Houses were now open, not for ceremonial worship, as sacrificing, for this was confined to the temple, but for more religious instruction. So people opened their homes, not for sacrificing or worship, that was the temple's job, but for, it says, but for moral and religious instruction. Go ahead. Uh, but for more religious instruction as praying, preaching, reading the law, divine worship, and social duties. They kept, go ahead, watch this. These houses were called synagogues. Synagogues, that's schools. Go ahead. The people. The people. Come on. The people repaired thither for morning and evening prayer. And on Sabbaths and festivals, the law was read and expounded to them. We have a short but Beautiful description of the manner of Ezra's first preaching. Nehemiah 8. eight. Upward of 50,000 people assembled in a street in a street or large square near the winter gate. It was the water gate. Water gate. It was early in the morning of a Sabbath day. Go down. A pulpit of wood. A pulpit of wood. A pulpit of wood in the fashion of a small tower was placed there on purpose for the preacher. See? So you can stand above the people. Go ahead. Go down. From this period. From this period to that of appearance of Jesus Christ. Public preaching was universal. Stop. From this period to the appearance of Christ, public preaching was universal. They all taught in the street. Christ taught in the street. Nehemiah taught in the street. Lish Elijah taught in the street. Their disciples taught in the street. And held up signs. Go ahead. Synagogues were multiplied. Vast numbers attended. And schools, schools were opened. Vast numbers attended. Sound familiar? Go ahead. And elders and rulers were appointed for the purpose of order, order and, and instruction. instruction. Boom. Elders and rulers were appointed for the purpose of order and instruction. There is no do your own thing. Unless you're a nigger. That's the only way you do your own, do my own thing. Let the Spirit show you what the Bible... Give me Ezekiel 13 and 1. Here's what you guys are doing. Here's what you guys are doing. 
I'm going to teach that doctrine. Just let the Spirit guide you. Okay. The book Ezekiel of Ezekiel, 13 and 1. Chapter 13, verse 1. We're going to read the verse 3. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Out of their own what? Hearts. Out of their own hearts. That's the people that leave, that betray the faith, that go back into the world, start siding with enemies and heathens against this faith because of their own disenchantment. Oh, man, I left because it, I learned that you guys, you guys, he prophesied things. It didn't happen. It didn't come to pass. So the whole truth is a lie. No, nigga, you a lie. Your elders a liar, that's fine. But the whole faith, you being Israel is a lie. Historically, it's proven that we're Israelites. Even if you, even if you were to, to, to consider that your, elders are the, that your elders are the devil the Bible speaks of, the fact that we're Israelites is concrete. There's no denying that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans and the African diaspora are children of Israel. Regardless of what actions your elders um, or evils your elders commit, that's a historical fact. That's a biblical fact. But you, being disingenuous in what you believe, you go, no, you know what? All this is a lie. My elder got caught in wickedness, so everything I learned is a lie. No, no, brother, no. So they leave it. They look, they look for reasons. Okay, well, I left the faith. I got to go back to the world again. So, And I know the world is evil, and I'm joining the world again, so I got to make the truth evil too. So that way... I don't look as bad back in the world. Because if, if both are bad, I'm good. That's what y'all do. And you go on YouTube, open up channels, pointing out all the evil crimes committed by Israelites or black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, a man and his two daughters are found dead in the house. They are part of the Hebrew Israelite, black Hebrew Israelite faith. Yeah, see? Look, brother, look, people. They're a cult. People are dying in, the, in that in the organization. You know how many people die in the Christian church? Catholic, you got, they found bodies of Native American babies buried, buried under, under, under schools established by Christian institutions. No one talks about that, though. Child molestation in the Catholic Church, no one mentions that. The Muslims and, 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 and these mosques and so forth in foreign countries having us as slaves in Africa and so forth, no one mentions that. But the Israelites are the sole focus. Yeah, the brother that drove through a crowd the other day, he, um, a few weeks ago, he drove through a crowd of people. Yeah, you go through his search history, his search stuff on YouTube, he was watching Israelites. Like, so? Yeah, that means he was part of them. Because he was watching them? He was part of them? The, the lengths that niggas will go. Just be wicked and die. Read it again. From this period, to that of the appearance of Jesus Christ. Public preaching was universal. Synagogues were multiplied. Vast numbers attended. And elders and rulers were appointed for the purpose of order and instruction. For the purpose of order and instruction, elders and rulers were provided. Over here, the apostles copied. The apostles copied their divine master. The apostles copied. I mean, they sounded just like him. They taught like him, spoke like him. They copied their divine master. Go ahead. They formed multitudes of, multitudes of religious societies. They established schools. The disciples established schools or churches, ac academies, universities. Same thing. Go ahead. And were abundantly successful in their labor. And they, the apostles, were abundantly successful in their labors. Those that leave, where is your success? Where is your labor? Those that join with the apologetics in them, where's your success in labor? Where's your works? Because we're so evil, right? Yeah, I, I, I was brainwashed by, the, by IUIC. Now I see the light. Yeah? Really? Well, where's the light in your school? Where's the light in your institutions at? Where are your teaching videos at? Were you out there traveling in the Teaching in public, like the Bible says to do. Like history records us doing. Where's your rec records of that? We'll, we'll hold our breath. Keep going. <laughs> the apostles copied the divine master. They formed multitudes of religious societies and were abundantly successful in their labors. They confined their attention to religion and left the schools to dispute 
and politicians to intrigue. They left the schools to dispute, and they had debates. They, they, they debated those who were worthy of their time. Not true students. Some of you are be debating a bunch of losers and idiots and put barriers in their back and feed them and feed them. It says attention to um, dispute and politicians to intrigue. We've spoken to politicians. Bishop went out there to Africa, spoke to a politician out there. We've spoken to mayors. We've spoken to governors in different states. That's what leaders do. That's what apostles do. What the hell are y'all doing watching us? They hate our guts so much. What are you doing? Continue. The doctrines they preach, they support it entirely by evidence. Oh, my God. That's in here? Yes, sir. The doctrines they preach, they support it entirely by evidence. That's what we have out in history classes. Shout out Tuesdays. We teach and we teach. We have the evidence to back it up. Hell, we're showing it right now. Go ahead. And neither had nor required such assistance as human laws or worldly policy. The eloquence of schools or the terror arms could afford them. Oh, my God. And neither had nor required such assistance as human laws or worldly policy, the eloquence of schools. I mean, they didn't go to regular schools. They didn't learn this stuff from schools of learning that the world provided. Could afford them. This, this is of God. Read on. The apostles being dead, everything came to pass as they had foretold. See? The apostles being dead, everything came to pass as they foretold. Watch this. The whole Christian system. The whole Christian system in time underwent a miserable change. We just, what? We just read this. So once the apostles died, what you have? The Nicene period, where pagan Christianity took over. Roman Catholicism took over. Roman Catholicism took over. Read it again from the top. The apostles being dead, everything came to pass as they had foretold. And the, and the truth spread more because of that. Go ahead. The whole Christian system in time underwent a miserable change. Go ahead. Preaching shared the fate of other institutions. Ah, preaching shared the fate of other institutions. Go ahead. And the glory of the primitive church gradually degenerate into degenerated. the modern Christian church. Go ahead. Those writers whom we call the fathers, however, held, held up to view by some as models for imitation, do not deserve that indiscriminate praise. Who are the fathers? That's them church fathers you read about earlier. Them church fathers. Read again. Those writers what? Those writers whom we call the fathers. The church fathers. Go ahead. However, held up to view by some as models for imitation. Go ahead. Do not deserve. They do not deserve. Go ahead. That indiscriminate praise ascribed to them. Because they were liars. They rejected the apostles. Go ahead. Christianity, it is true, is found in their writings. It, so they did mention Christianity, go ahead. But how sadly incorporated with pagan philosophy and Jewish, Jewish allegory. allegory. That's Christianity. Pagan philosophy and Jewish allegory. Go ahead. It must indeed be allowed that in general, the simplicity of Christianity was maintained, though under gradual decay during the first, first three, three centuries. That's the Council of Nicaea. It, went, it underwent freaking corruption. That's all I want. That's, that's alone. That's a banger by itself. So a lot of people who are Christians now, you're in the decayed Christian doctrine. Give me, no, um, give me uh, 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18. The book of 1 Kings. Chapter Goes around, was around. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, start at verse 1. D yeah. And it came to pass, after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Ahab was uh, the simp king that was ruled by his wife, Jezebel, at this time. Northern kingdom. Sorry, northern kingdom. Go ahead. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Right, go ahead. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Who was she killing? She was killing the students. Jezebel was killing Elijah's students, Elijah's students. That's what she was doing. She was killing them during this time. Remember, they, were, they taught like him. Against, what she, against, her, against her policies, her practices, she was killing them. Go ahead. 
that Obadiah took in hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave. Obadiah took those same students and he hid them away, keep them safe. Go ahead. And fed them with bread and water. And they have said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. Go ahead. So they divided the land. Was a famine. Go ahead. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, And I, I am. Go tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. Mm -hmm. And he said, Ahab, I'm here. Go ahead. And he said, What, what have I sinned? What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whether my Lord have not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they found thee not. Yeah. And now thou, thou sayest, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. What he's saying is basically people, uh, basically, he, people told him that Elijah was nowhere to be found. You, you want me to go and tell, tell um, the, the king that you're here, and then if I come back and you're gone, he'll kill me. So you're gonna be, are you going to be here? If I, if I go and tell him that you're here, are you going to be here when I get back so you don't kill me if you're not here? That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 13. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? Go ahead. And now thou sayest, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. today. Go ahead. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Yeah. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. I'm not troubling Israel, you're troubling Israel. Because you guys went against God and start serving the devil. Go ahead. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves. 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Uh -huh. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if ba ba Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. So he still remember. Jezebel had killed a lot of his of his students, right? Of his prophets that, that, were, that were mentored under him and so forth, or mentored in general. Leaders like, like himself or students were killed equally. So he so he goes, You got 450 prophets over here. All right, let's let's, let's see what the real um um prophet is. Go ahead. Verse 23. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I would dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. Right, go ahead. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So you're going to put your sacrifice over here, but my sacrifice over here. You call upon your gods or call upon my God. Let's see which God wins. Go ahead. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even, from morning even until noon. They called on their god Baal from morning until what? Until noon. Hours, hours. Baal, Baal. Nothing. Go ahead. Saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leapt upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said. <laughs> Elijah started making fun of them. Go ahead. And saying what? That's why I make fun of y'all. I leave up out of here. I make fun of you because you just did your be, your be all worshippers too. Y'all serve the devil as well. Yeah, he mocked them and did what? Cry aloud, for he is a God. Cry aloud, he's a God. Baal's a God. Go ahead. 
Either he is talking Maybe or... Maybe he's having a conversation. He can't hear you. Go ahead. Or he is pursuing. Maybe he's chasing somebody. Maybe somebody robbed him. He's chasing him. Go ahead. Or he is in a journey. Maybe we're on vacation somewhere. Or per adventure, he's sleeping. Maybe he's tired. He didn't hear you call him. He's asleep. Go ahead. He must be awake. You got to wake him up. Cry louder. Wake him up. He's asleep. He's mocking him. Go ahead. And they cry aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lanterns till the blood gush they out upon them. start cutting themselves. Just and, and sprinkling the blood everywhere, try to get this guy, get this guy to wake up to them, answer them. Go ahead. And it came to pass when midday was past. Now mid, now that noon is gone. Go ahead. And they prophesied unto the the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Now it's evening time. Go ahead. That there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come there unto me. And all the people came there unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribe of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Verse 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar. He made a trench around, around the altar. Go ahead. As great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water. And poured on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Mm -hmm. And he said, do it the second time. Do it again. And he did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And he did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. Right, they poured water on the sacrifice. They dug a trench around it. And the water that they poured on, on the altar filled the trench. Watch this. In verse, verse 36. <clears throat> and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy ser servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Come on. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust. Damn. And licked up the water that was in the trench. Water got dried out. Go ahead. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Go ahead. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. So he killed. So Jezebel killed his prophets. And he went and killed her prophets in retaliation. I get chapter 19 now. Verse 1. First Kings, chapter 19, verse 1. Let's see what she says. And Ahab, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent the messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. I'm going to kill you like you killed them. I'm gonna, <laughs> this woman was worse. Go ahead. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Ran. Go ahead. And, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Go ahead. Left Elisha there. Go ahead. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Come on. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. And said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. An angel of the Lord came and came again the second time. So an angel gave him dinner, gave him some food, go ahead. And touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and Damn. forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Damn, go ahead. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Why are you here, Elijah? What you doing here? Go ahead. Verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. They try to kill me too. Go ahead. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains. Damn, mountains ripped. Go ahead. And breaking pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. You couldn't see him in it. Go ahead. You couldn't see him. Go ahead. And after the wind, an earthquake, 
but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Yeah. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Damn. And after the fire, a still small voice. Yeah. Verse 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle. Got his face in the hoodie. Go ahead. And went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thy comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thy anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of, uh, of Abel, Abel Mola, yeah. shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that him, the escape of the sword of Haziel, shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Damn. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed them. Meaning she didn't kill all the prophets. There's some left. They're not the only one left. This, that's why he ran. He thought he was alone. He said, nah, there's some left. There's 100, there's 100 that, that Lobadiah hit, hit us side by 50s. You got 7,000 others that have not bowed to Baal, that still believe in the Lord, that still believe in me. All right? So Elijah was not alone. He thought he was, but he wasn't alone. Now, um, verse 18. Get our Acts 7 now. <clears throat> Acts 7, 51 now we're at. This is, this is when um, they uh, had Stephen on trial, and he spoke up for himself while he was on trial for the lies that were spoken against him. Acts 7, 51. We're going to um, continue from there. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. In the law of God is the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one. They showed the prophets are speaking about Christ before, even in that time, and they were killed by, they were killed for that. Go ahead. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. So what is um, Stephen saying? What happened back then is happening now. You had prophets that spoke about Christ, the coming of the just one, Back then, and you killed them. Now you're now you're trying to kill us. You're trying to kill me. Same thing. Nothing new. Go ahead. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They got mad as hell, gnashed him with their teeth. Go ahead. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. And saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Right, because he was going to die. So he saw both of them. Go ahead. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So he saw the Father on one side and the Son on his right hand side. Two separate entities. That alone cuts that Trinity doctrine in itself. Just by him seeing both of them at what same time. Go ahead. And said, Behold. I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. Mm -hmm. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Who became Paul. Go ahead. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. They killed him. I get um, Acts chapter 8. Read on to verse 4. And Saul was consenting. Acts 8 verse 1. Yes, sir. The book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Right. Saul was there. He agreed to it. Go ahead. And at that time, there was a great persecution. At against... that time, there was a great, great persecution. Go ahead. Against the church. Against the church. Against the early Christian church, the apostolic, the, the apostles, go ahead. Which was at Jerusalem. Which was at Jerusalem, go ahead. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Except the main 12, go ahead. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. So, remember, the disciples set up disciples. The disciples became elders and they set up deacons. Um, Stephen was killed. So the other deacons were scattered abroad. 
The 12 remained in Jerusalem. The apostles remained there. They weren't scattered, but their disciples were. Go ahead. Uh, as for verse 3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. As for Saul, he made he went, he went ape, S-H, on the church. Go ahead. Entering to every house, inhaling and hauling men and women committed them to prison. And had them people and had people locked up. Saul became what you know what you call historically as an inquisitor. Saul was running around, chasing and locking up and killing anyone who acknowledged Christ, keep the commandments in Christ. They were being persecuted. He was he was a freaking bounty hunter. That's the Saul was. Saul was a bounty hunter. He was a killer, an inquisitor. That's what he was. Go ahead. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad. Went everywhere preaching the word. Those who were scattered abroad, the disciples, they went everywhere, wherever they were scattered to, preaching the word. Now, get chapter, chapter um, 12 and verse 1. The book of Acts. No, no, get Acts 11, verse 19 again. The Let book of go Acts. Go back to that again. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11, verse 19. Uh huh. While Peter thought on the vision. The no, Acts eleven nineteen. Sorry. The book of Acts chapter 11, verse 19. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. You said it earlier. That was Acts 8. Now, they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. Go ahead. Travel as far. Travel where? Traveled as far as Phoenicia. Phoenicia. And Cyprus. Cyprus. And Antioch. Syria. And preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Preaching to the Jews only, because that was the, under the orders of the disciples or the apostles to teach Judah only at this time. Now, get Acts 12 and verse 1. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. The church, going back to the, um, the apostles. Go ahead. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. James, the brother of John, the sons of Zebedee. James, the brother of John, was killed. James was put to death. Go ahead. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. Because he, he saw what? And because he saw it pleased the Jews. This white man killed Israel, killed a Jew, and, be, and, and by him, he saw that him killing the Christians, the early Christians, it pleased the Jews. It made them happy to see him kill their own. They were happy to see the white man Killed their own brother. Some of you brothers on YouTube right now look forward to getting us locked up or killed. You're just like them. Getting brothers killed. Running to, the, running to SPLC. Running to BBC. ABC. NBC. Running to the apologetics. Because you want something to happen to us. Editing our videos. Chopping them up to show we said something we didn't say. To stir up the people against us in the streets against us, have them shoot at us, shoot up our schools, shoot up our cars. It's been done. Because y'all too cow, y'all too much of a cow to do it yourselves. Read again, verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. So because he saw killing James, the brother of John, pleased this, pleased the Jews, he tried to kill Peter too. The leader, the elder. Go ahead. Remember, this is, he killed an elder. James and John was a, these are apostles. He killed one out of the, he killed one out of the, out of the twelve, and tried to kill Peter too. Go ahead. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Then what? At that at that time was Passover. Watch this. And when he had uh, apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions uh, of soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Intending after his celebration of Easter to have Peter killed before the people. Executed before the people. What people? His own people. Because niggas ain't S.H. I say it all the time. They're terrible. That's why we don't focus on the white man. White man, white man. No, no, no. Negroes are worse. We're in slavery because we're in slavery because of you. We're here because of you. Not because of the white man. White man rules because of you. Give me Matthew. Or give me Luke. Um, Luke. Look at it. Look at it real quick. Eleven. On second. Come on. 
one sec. I know to speak to me. Hold on. Luke chapter six. Luke chapter six. Verse twenty one. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 21. Get there with you. Go ahead. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Right. First, blessed are you who are hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Because when the time comes, when the Lord brings about judgment upon this land, and there's food shortage and so forth, I'm good. And there's food shortage and so forth, you'll be filled. All right, when it comes time to mourn, you'll laugh. You'll get delivered. Go ahead. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. Blessed are you when men shall hate you. Go ahead. And when they shall separate you from their company. When they don't want you around them. Some of y'all try to wonder why your family doesn't want you around. They hate your guts. They speak, we read it earlier in Peter, they shall speak evil of you because you don't um, riot to the same excess as they do. Bible says, blessed are you in what? Read again. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. When men shall hate you, go ahead. And when they shall separate you from their company. When they don't want you around, go ahead. And shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. And they'll the start to slander you uh, like they, they did stepping. Cast out your name as evil. You're in the cult. You're brainwashed. You hate your family. You're rigid. You become rigid. You don't want to spend time with us anymore. You don't like us. You, don't, you, don't, you, you, you're, you know, you turn against your family. You look, your wife, you, I'm turning against your wife, your husband, your mother, your father. Go ahead. For the son of man's sake. For whose sake? For the son of man's sake. For my sake. For the son of man's sake. For Christ's sake. Go ahead. Rejoice ye in that day. The Lord, and the Lord said, rejoice in that day. Why? And leap for joy. And be happy. Leap for dance. Leap for joy. Go ahead. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Because you're hated by people, even those that love you, who loved you, past tense, it says what? For your reward is great in heaven. Why? For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Because the same thing happened to the prophets. Their families turned on them. People, they, they became deemed as haters, a black identity extremists, terrorists. Give me the next um, book now, what I want. Give me, um, oh, get that for now, I'll get this. Matthew 10. And verse uh, 16. Give me that article about um uh about haters of mankind. You want uh, Matthew 10 right now? All right. Give me the article first. That's page 90, 97 and 98. Thank you. Goes around, was around. You're a, de you're a black identity. They're, they're trying to rouse up, stir up the, peop stir up the people against us with, with um, instances of people who identify as Israelites committing murder, um, harming people. They, they try to make these Muslims in Jersey City over there at Sharper Supermarket. Oh, those are Israelites. They were Muslims. That, that, didn't, that didn't go, that didn't fly too well. And they have other articles or news, news articles of black, of the men um, or women who identify as Israelites when crimes committed amongst them or whatever. And that, it, it makes local news. It's not really widespread yet. But they're trying to, they're trying to pretty much round the information, around the, um, gather information against us slowly. That's what they're doing. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay, let's start from, from Ephesus. You can start from there, I guess. Right? From Ephesus? Uh, where we at? I sent you something, too, about, about Tac Tacitus as well. Got that? Let's read that next. Read this from Ephesus. Ephesus, where he left Timothy to direct the affairs of that numerous church. No, from no, no. no. This is from Ephesus. Paul went into Macedonia, right? Where we going? Where we starting from? Go go down, go down. Go you down. sent me this. I don't know this. Go, go, go down, go down. You wanted, uh, but while Paul was, you want to get to the point, right? Yeah. All right. 
Uh, but while Paul was thus employed in conveying the glad tidings of mercy to guilty men or confirming the churches and the truths, they had already learned a right, just... Right, he was, it says, or confirming the churches and truths they had already learned. So he was confirming the churches, setting them in order, like the Lodge Alicia was doing. Go ahead. A dreadful storm was gathering at Rome. A dreadful storm was gathering at Rome during this time. Never Which, mind, like we're doing, we teach now, we go out in the street now, we teach public speakings and so forth, and we teach, and you know, we're good, right? We, we, we go out there, we teach, we come home, right? We're good. We have freedom of speech, go out there, teach, right? Man, you know, the devil, uh, repent, no more New Year's, no more Christmas, right? Uh, it's the Sabbath day, you out here buying and selling. We go out there, we teach, you rebuke, we get challenged, we don't get challenged, you go out there, edified, people get edified, people challenge, whatever, and we go see, we see another day, right? But that happened at this time. It says, it was confirming the churches, but a dreadful storm was gathering in Rome. Watch this. Which burst upon the church there with tenfold fury. Which burst upon the church with tenfold fury. Watch this. Nero. Nah, this is Nero now. Emperor Nero. Go ahead. Who had swayed the imperial scepter about ten years, and who had arrived at such a pitch of wickedness as to prepare the minds of his subjects for the belief of any act of tyranny, cruelty, or vileness, which was reported of him. He was terrible, even among his own people. He was Even among his own, he was terrible. Go ahead. It's said to have set fire to the city of Rome on the 10th of July, uh, A.D. 64. So he set the city on fire for some reason. I don't know. Go ahead. In consequence of which, of which a great part of it was laid in ashes. Burned to the ground. Go ahead. Mischief and... And the misery of others were his delight. He enjoyed it. Go ahead. And he is said to have expressed great pleasure at the spectacle, indulging himself in singing the burning of Troy while his own city was in flames. Wow. He, crazy. Go ahead. he however, very soon became the su suspected incendiary and consequently the object of popular hatred. Well, they realized that he did it. He was, he, uh, 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 word came around that it was him that did it, that caused the fire. Go ahead. To clear himself from the odious charge. To clear himself of the charge he was clearly guilty of. He, en ahead. he endeavored to fix the crime on the Christians. He decided to fix the crime on the Christians, on the disciples. Go ahead. And having thus falsely and tyrannically imputed the guilt to them. And having thus falsely and tyrannically imputed the guilt to them. Go ahead. He put them to death. By various methods of exquisite cruelty. I'm going to give you an example. I want you to type in Nero Software. Hold on to that. Type in Nero Software. Long time ago, people, when we still had CDs, you had burning CDs. It was called Nero Software. Right? It's pretty old now. I'm not sure if it's still up, but Nero Software do. Click that, I guess it. Right there. It's called Nero Software. I want you to read this right here. What Nero Software was used for. It was called Nero. What does Nero Software do? What does Nero, because back then it, was, it, was, it involved CDs. Now, now you got freaking MP3s, MP4s, so it's, we're outdated. it's outdated now. But in some instances, but watch it. It was used for when CDs were popular. Watch. Those, Nero, yeah, those like, for example, myself, I used to download songs on my, my computer, and I would use burning software to put on CDs. They did that for DVDs back in the day, bootlegs, CDs, and mutant movies. They used this software here. Watch. And games. Watch this. Nero, burning ROM. Nero, burning ROM. Go ahead. Commonly called Nero. Commonly called Nero. Go ahead. Is an optical disc authoring program for Nero AG. The software is part of the Nero multimedia suite, but is also available as a standalone product. It is used for what? It is used for burning and copying optical discs such as CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Why is Nero software called, used for burning software? Because Nero was setting Christians on fire. That's why it's called burning, Nero software. Nero was setting us on fire. He, set, he, he would tie, he would crucify us around the, the, the Colosseum and set us on fire as, to, light up the, to light up the stadium. Give me Yankee Stadium, please. Image of Yankee Stadium. This is modeled after. This is modeled after it. That's why it says the exquisite torture. Type in nighttime, Yankee Stadium nighttime. At night. Mm -hmm. I live in the Bronx. I saw this all the time. 
Yep. Uh, that's the inside. You see it. Click right there. Click. Uh, yeah. Click that one. Put the bottom left one there. Oh, either on those two left right there. Those two. That one. That's fine. Put that. Blow it up. Because Yankee Stadium is a coliseum. Blow it up. So here's lights up there up top. That'll be bodies in Nero's Coliseum in Rome. That's what that was. That's what that symbolizes. Lights all around the Coliseum was burning Christians. That's what that was. That's why I call that burning software Nero. Because he saw the devil the Bible speaks of. Making fun of us. You're sitting, you're sitting up here watching this game and this, all that symbolism is all around you. You know what the hell's going on. That's all I want. Hey, D, we got a couple of... Uh... Nero, the uh, CD-ROM labels, too. The go, to, labels. Go, go to the CD-ROM labels of Nero. It's burning Online software. Requests. Labels. <clears throat> Let's see that. Wow. Blow them up. Blow them up. Nero burning software. Are you able to blow it up? You got to download it first so you can blow it up for y'all. All right. Blow it up. There's a couple of them. Show all of them. Yeah, show them all. That's the Coliseum on fire. Who's on fire? Us. Nero burning rom. That's clearly a coliseum there. And fire all around. Got more? Yes, sir. Show the other ones. Show the other one, please. For those of y'all who own Nero burning software, now you know why it's called Nero burning software. It goes Nero again. Got a flame right there. This man gotta go. This nation got. This man gotta go, man. Yeah, that's the other one with the flame. That's the one with the flame right there. And there's two more. Type in uh. Uh, more, type in narrow, Google, um, thank you, uh, who sent me this? Captain Joel sent me, um, uh, I want, narrow burning Christians. Google, Google narrow burning Christians and go to images. Like I said, what the apostles did was they would bring out things with evidence. That's what I'm doing. That's what apostles do. This loyal Negro is just talking, smoke weed on videos and sniff coke, whatever the hell y'all be doing. And back or join forces with apologetics on a clubhouse or, you know, that's what y'all do. While we do the work. This is an image of them now. This is an image. Of course, it made them white, whatever. But blow it up. Let's just give you an, an, an idea. Move it over to the right. See them up there? See up there, tied up there, up there, being burned? That's up there, um, up top there, wrapped up. That's the Christians up there. All right? Um, that guy has a beard up there. Go to the next one. Go down, click, I mean, click, get out of that. Got black folks standing right there. I'm not sure who they are. Um... Should show, uh, I think a lion. Yeah, go to the online lion. request. A, 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 right, right there. Yeah, that's that's it. The lion. Not that one. Right there. That one. Yep. Blow it up. So uh, as the games went on, and I believe Ignatius also was uh, was teaching some truth as well. He was, I believe, he was set on fire as well. I believe. During this time. And the fire didn't burn them, they say. That's them burning us there as well. And they had the games right there. As they're burning, the games are being are taking place. See the track marks of the the um, the, 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 um, the games, the track marks around from the, from the wheels, the wagons. You watch a movie called Gladiator, it shows the games. All right, and the lion right there. They feed us to the lions. The lion's going to eat them, and they're burning us in a circle, in a circle. Terrible. Go to Matthew 10. And read verse uh, 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. Thank you, y'all. Thanks a lot. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. 
Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we tell you, brothers and sisters, man, when you when you out there, well, we brother, or you're out there in the world, I should say, brothers and sisters, when you're out there in the world, if you're gonna speak, you must speak as the oracles of God. You must conduct yourself in a biblical manner. Don't get emotional. Don't come out of character and defame the ministry. You gotta stay in the spirit. Because you'll bring because these nations, this nation is currently gathering intel. That's what she's doing, gathering intel to further prove that the black Hebrew Israelite community or, excuse me, occult doctrine is violent. We're terrorists. And and, and it's local news now, but after a while, when the truth starts to spread more and more, like it did during the time of the the, um, the the six deacons, or seven, six of the deacons, or whatever, and start to spread, they're going to start stirring up people against us with propaganda, news. Give me first Esther 5 and 72. Go, hold, hold, hold on to that. Give me Matthew 10. Hold on, hold on to um to that. Give me hold on to Esther. Just go back to Matthew 10 again. Give me the next page as well, as well the, Inqu- um, the um, next page as well, the Inquisition page. The uh, 492 book. Is that it? Is that all I wanted from there? That's all I wanted? Nah, D, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't finished reading it, right? right? we ain't finished reading Go back to that. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked from the images that threw me off and pissed me off. You got Ezra and, and, and Matthew, right? Hold on yes, to those sir. two. Yes, sir. I got you. Read this here. Continue. So now I showed you what Hitler was doing to us. He showed you the images. Now, and I sent you something also about Tac- Tacitus, right? About Tacitus? Yeah, read that also. You try to remind me, man. Let me phone fast. This is a deep. Don't forget. Go ahead. We got? Um, it says, to clear himself from the odious charge, he endeavored to fix the crime on the Christians. Right. And having thus falsely and tyr- tyrannically imputed the guilt to them, he put them to death by various methods of exquisite cruelty. Turning us on fire. Go ahead. The account, which is given us by Tacitus. I had this account here. Tacitus. Go ahead. A heathen historian. Yep. It's too remarkable to be omitted. And by the way, Tacitus, a heathen historian, mentions Christ being crucified, which means he lived. He was alive. Him, Josephus, and somebody else mentioned Christ actually walked, by law, I believe, actually walking the earth. Go ahead. Keep going. A heathen historian is too remarkable to be omitted. Speaking of Nero and the conflagration. Not only it's not followed. I know Tacitus and, and Josephus and somebody else mentioned him. But go ahead. Go and, conf- ahead. and conflagration of Rome. He thus proceeds to divert suspicion from himself. He substituted fictitious crim- uh, criminals and with that view inflicted the most exquisite tortures on those men. Wow. Who, under the vulgar appellation of Christians. Who, under the what? The vulgar appellation of Christians. Watch this. We're already branded with deserved infamy. We were already branded with deserved infamy. Go ahead. The confessions of those who were seized discovered discovered a great multitude of their accomplices, and they were all convict, convicted, not so much for the crime of setting fire to the city. So they weren't they were convicted for the crime of setting fire to the city. Go ahead. As for their hatred. But as for their hatred, go ahead. Of humankind. They were a hate group. They were killed for because they were as for a hatred of humankind. They were killed because they were deemed haters of mankind. Hate group. You can't make this, you cannot make this up. What goes around was around. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. So I want to eat. All right. Now, give me what I asked for on um, Tacitus one. I want that next. Unless you want some of the torments that we went through. Does it show that? Yes, sir. Let me see what it says. It's mentioned the burnings. It might mention. Let's just read the, tor- read, read, read the tortures. Let's just read it. Go back. Let's get out of our system. Read that. They died in torments, and these were embittered, embittered by insult and derision. Wow. Some were nailed on crosses. Others sewed up in the, in the skins of wild beasts. Wow, they sewed wild skins on us, beasts, go ahead. And exposed to the fury of dogs. Dogs shut on us. Hey, that sound familiar? Like in the 60s riots? Mm. The dogs on us. Fury of the dogs. Same thing. Same people doing the same thing again. Go ahead. Others, again, were smeared over with combustible material and used as torches to il- illuminate the darkness of the night. See? There you go. Evidence. Set us on basically gasoline and set us on fire to light the night. Go ahead. The gardens of Nero were 
uh, destined for the melancholy spectacle, which was accompanied by a horse race. You saw that earlier with the with the with the um the wheels in the ground, the, the racetrack wheels, and the lion there, and the Christians in the circle there. Go ahead. Um, which was a comp- which was accompanied by a horse race and honored with a the horse pres- race. That's it. Go ahead. And honored with the presence of the emperor, who mingled with the populace in the dress and altitude of a char- attitude, uh, attitude of a character of a charioteer, charioteer. charioteer. Go ahead. The guilt of the Christians deserved indeed the most exemplary punishment. <sighs> Go but, ahead. The, but the public of of, of was changed into uh, commiseration, commiseration from ahead. the opinion that these unhappy wretches were sacrificed. They called us unhappy wretches. You guys are miserable. You guys hate everybody. Same thing. Go ahead. Not so much to the rigor of justice. Not 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 according to justice. We were actually criminals. Go ahead. As to the cruelty of the jealous tyrant. But based upon the, the cruelty and jealousy that Nero had for us. Go ahead. That's it. That's all. Yeah, I'll read on. We'll read I want on. that part. Intelligence of these cruelties being brought to Paul while at Crete, and thinking his presence might be useful in comforting the minds of his brethren, he set out for Italy and probably arrived at Rome in the beginning of the year 65, where he was apprehended as being a chief man among this obnoxious sect. See, he was deemed the chief man among this among this sect. So he was also targeted, and he was killed by Nero. Okay? He was killed by Nero. So now, give me Matthew 10 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. Oh, Tacitus. Thank you. Give me Tacitus. The annals of Tacitus. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations. On a class hated for their abominations, meaning our beliefs were considered abominations. Or a cult. Same thing. Called Christians by the populace. Called Christians by the populace. Go ahead. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius. At the hands of one of our procurators. One of our. This is Tacitus writing this. Who? Pontius Pilate. Pont- See? He's writing down what happened to Christus going into Christ. Go ahead. And a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment, again broke out not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome. They call He called Judea the first source of the evil, or the Christian doctrine, but even in Rome. Go ahead. We're all things. Go ahead. Where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world found their center and became and become popular. Yeah, like New York. Go ahead. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted. Not so, not so much of the crime of fire in the city as of hatred against mankind. There you go. So we were killed not for setting fire to the city, but because we hated mankind. We were deemed haters of mankind. You guys are full of hatred. You're racist. Go ahead. Mockery of every sort was added to their deaths. Covered with the skins of beasts, they were torn by dogs and perished, or were nailed to crosses, or were doomed to the flames and burnt to serve as a nightly illumination when daylight had expired. So that guy quoted from Tacitus. That's what that's that's from. This is Tacitus here. Showing you. Matthew 10 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. Yeah, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Come on. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. That's what happened, that's what happened with Stephen. That's what happened with James. That was what happened, that's what happened with Peter. They were going to bring, they were, it says, you shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, meaning for the gospel, for a testimony, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Because if you go out there and preach the word of God, you're preaching against this kingdom. We're preaching treason. We're preaching the rise of a new leader, a new empire to come after, um, during this one. That's because of the treason in some other countries. Because of our liberty we have here, we can say those things. But after a while, they're going to get tired of us. They got tired of us in Rome. They got tired of us in Spain and Portugal. And they're going to get tired of us here. 
Even in Canada, you can't say, in Canada, you can't say certain things. Bible or no Bible. A man got, uh, uh, I believe, uh, 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 um, these white dudes got thrown in jail for, what was it? Brought it up, um, I brought it up before. Thrown in jail for preaching the Bible. $500,000 bond, right? 500, it was 500 grand for their bond. They had to knock, knock it down to like $5,000, I think. For preaching the Bible, using the word, I think, Harlot or Jezebel. They, they, they was in jail. And their bond was set real high for preaching the Bible. Don't sleep. Read on. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. Go ahead. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Come on. And the brother, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Come on. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. You shall be deemed haters of mankind. They're going to call you a hate group and they're going to hate you. Read on. Read again. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. When it says all men, it's not just referring to other nations. It's referring to your own people, your own family, your own friends, your brothers, your sisters, your siblings. Your husbands, your wives, your children. You'll be hated for my name's sake. Go ahead. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But if you carry your cross or you endure that to the end, you shall be saved. Read on. But when they persecute you in the city, flee you into another. That's what happened, with, that's what happened in Acts 8. They fled to different cities. Phoenice, Cyprus, Antioch, they fled and, they, and the gospel spread. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel. Till the Son of Man become. I mean, you can't, we're not going to reach all Israel, but just enough for Christ to show up to save those who God be saved and kill those who God be killed. Give me the next book now, another, four, another 492. To further show this persecution continued way after this. Right there, that right there, there, there. go to the book cover. It's kind of light. It's kind of glare on it, but whatever. I'll read it for y'all. It's called The Other 1492. The Other 1492, Jewish Settlement in the New World by Norman Finkelstein. All right, and it goes into detail about the um, um, Inquisition. Shout out to the D.C. camp for giving me this book, like, way back. Putting me onto it. Uh, page 29. Hold up. We're going to read... It did it. Read, the people of Seville, read that. The people of Seville. Remember, I told, you, I told you earlier that Paul, when he was Saul, he was an inquisitor of that time. Okay? He, his job was, a set, was he was set up pretty much to pretty much lock up or kill anyone who followed behind the doctrine of Christ. Early Christians. All right? Or Jewish Christians. Go ahead. The people of Seville. Spain. Greeted the establishment of the Inquisition with great joy. But the Moranos. And many of the nobility tried to prevent the tribunal, tribunal from operating in their city. Go ahead. They knew that the rules under which the Inquisition operated were unfair. The Moranos were those were Israelites that, that willfully converted to Christianity. So, but this, but this edict of, of the of Inquisition was against people who observed Judaism openly. They were not converts. They were following Christ. Let me read earlier. Well, yeah, no, I leave it alone. But they um, pretty much follow Christ. All right? During this time, keeping the commandments in Christ. Watch this. But the Ronalds knew that that persecution of them would eventually pour onto them as well, even if they were converted or not. Go ahead. Yet, as the Inquisitors entered Seville for the first time, they were grandly received in a splendid official procession. With the ceremonies over, it was time for the tribunal members to begin their holy work. Holy work. Watch this. Their job was to search out and punish Judaizers. Their job was to search out and punish Judaizers. Remember, pagan Christianity, remember, uh, this Inquisition was under the edict of, of King um, Ferdinand and Isabella. They were Hispano-Romans, meaning these were a Roman king and queen that had dominion over Spain. They're called Hispano-Romans, Spanish Romans, Romans that ruled over Spain. So they brought the same pagan Christianity that dumbass Israel had adopted and persecuted their own people with, during the Nicene Council, they gained dominion over the earth during the Renaissance and assumed that same doctrine. 
of Nicene Christianity or Catholicism and brought it against us in Spain and Portugal where we, reside, where, we, where we resided, observing Judaism and Christ and so forth. And what happened? Read it again. Their job was to search out what? Their job was to search out and punish Judaizers. Right. Go ahead. Those who showed even the slightest sign of support in observing a Jewish law. Observing what? A Jewish law, Go ahead. custom, or tradition. So those who showed even the slightest sign of supporting or observing Jewish law, custom, or tradition. What's that? That's Passover. Day of Atonement. That's um, the Sabbaths. Tabernacles. Pentecost. Perim. Go ahead. The Inquisitors began by setting a trap. They would set us up. Go ahead. They invited, behold, I send you as sheep amidst the wolves. Go ahead. They invited any guilty Murano to come forward and confess with no fear of punishment. Once those unfortunates presented themselves. Because you had Murano. What happened was you had Murano. You had Israelites that, that converted to the Christian faith sincerely. And you had Muranos that converted to the Christian faith um, falsely. I mean, they were, they, were, they were Christians outwardly, but in their house secretly. They were called crypto Jews, meaning they were secret Jews. So the Moranos, it says the Moranos that, that came forth and said, okay, I'm guilty. I'm a Judaizer. What happened? Go ahead. The Inquisitors began by setting a trap. They invited any guilty Morano to come any forward. Any guilty Morano. Go ahead. And confess with no fear of punishment. They told him, listen, you won't get, if, you tell, if you tell us that you're, that, you're a Judea, that, you're, that you're in Judaism, we won't hurt you. You'll be all right. Go ahead. Once those unfortunates presented themselves, they received a surprise demand. Once they confessed, go ahead. Provide the Inquisition with the names of friends and relatives who might also be Judaizers or go to jail. So the Inquisitors told them, listen, we won't do nothing to you. Just tell us about the other, Inquis the other Moranos who are, false, who are faking it, who are faking to be Catholics. And we'll let you go free. That was called meritorious manumissions during slavery. We can let you go free. Just tell us who, who, who are the rebellious slaves here. Be the rat. Be the snitch. Go to BBC News. Go to SPLC. Run to the apologetics. Go on Clubhouse and talk with them about your experience with Israelites and how they're a cult and how they're going off and they're, and they're, they're cultish. That's what you do. Being in, what, you, what that's called is an informant. These, these, these Moranos here is called being flipped. They flipped, they became CIs. These Israelites became CIs for other inquisitors who were also Jews too. But they were coons and coons and niggas. Okay, as well as heathens. Go ahead. From that moment provide on. Provide the names, for the, provide, for the, for the part again, provide the inquisition with what? Provide the inquisition with the names of friends and relatives. Provide them with your friends and family. Go ahead. Who might also be Judaizers or go to jail. Or you're going to go to jail. Go ahead. From or that, get deported. Go ahead. From that moment on, there was no lack of victims for the Inquisition. Everybody, someone, someone, someone had a price. Go on. Judaizing. Go ahead. Judaizing was a difficult crime to detect. It detect. was a crime. A difficult crime to protect. Go ahead. The, Inquisitor, the Inquisitors had a law passed which listed over 30 ways to recognize the guilty. They had a law passed. They had a book, a law passed to recognize a Judaizer. 30 of them. This book gives a few of them. Go ahead. Here are a few of the telltale signs. Watch this. Number one. Celebrating the Sabbath by wearing a clean shirt, not lighting a fire. Not cooking. Or not working. They have the day off. So you celebrate the Sabbath. This is laws. Go ahead. Number two. Eating meat during Lent. A Christian period of fasting. Because the conversos would keep what during this time? Passover. Because remember, remember, Lent and Passover were pretty much in the same season. It was synonymous. We kept we kept Lent um, openly, but in the house we eating Passover. You can you can't eat no meat during Lent. Only only fish. Go ahead. Number three, not eating or drinking on the Jewish Day of Atonement. They kept a Day of Atonement. Go ahead. Four, washing hands before praying. Go ahead. Five, blessing a cup of wine before eating. Watch this. Number six. Six, not eating pork. Not eating pork. Go ahead. Seven. Giving Old Testament names to children. Naming your last name Israel. Because Israel's an Old Testament last name, is it not? Old Testament name, whether last name or first name is an Old Testament name. So I'm just showing y'all what they did to us back in Rome, followed us 
into Spain and Portugal, and, it's, and, and more, more than likely it will follow us here. It's just slow, slow. As we read earlier, I said that, that, the, that the corrupting of, Christian, of the Christian doctrine was long, took a while. Give me Matt, read on Matthew 10 again. 10, 10, 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. 24. The, verse 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Meaning what Christ went through, as his servants, we will go through the same thing. The same cup he drank from, we're going to drink from. Go ahead. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. It is enough for the disciple that he must be as his master. Because remember, these guys are nailed on the cross and set on fire. The difference is Christ wasn't set on fire, but he was nailed to a cross. It's the same punishment. Ours is just worse than his. They killed Peter that way. They killed Paul. They beheaded Paul. Go ahead. And the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Be Beelzebub. If they have called the master the Messiah of the house, the devil, or a hate group, or a terrorist, a black identity extremist, Beelzebub, go ahead, a cult, go ahead. How much more shall they call them of his household? How much more us? This, in this truth, you are not, in this truth, you're not meant to be loved because this is not our world. In your world, in your kingdom, you're loved. In somebody else's, you're not. Or rather, you will not in the future. Go ahead. Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Go ahead. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetop. Go out there and preach it upon the housetops. I mean, what I teach you, don't hide it. What's being hidden, what's being, um, we, we go into class, we go into books and show y'all what they did to us how those things um, reflect until now, news articles, all kinds of current events we show y'all, but that things that, that should not be known to our people, we bring it to y'all um, openly. And after a while, those things we bring out to y'all, that we expose, they're going to get mad. And they're going to start, they're going to mobilize. Go ahead. And 28. Fear, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So, read on. So he's saying, what is he saying right here? He's saying they will kill you. Don't be afraid that you'll be killed because don't be afraid of the one that can kill your soul and your body at the same time. Not just man that can just kill your soul because you will face death. Not all of us, but some of us will face death as we did during Nero, as we did during King Ferdinand and Isabella. Go ahead. Are not, are not two sparrows sold for a father? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Go ahead. But the Lord, the Lord, so look, Christ is saying, if a bird falls out of the sky, there's not one bird that falls out of the sky that the Lord don't know about. Go ahead. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. The hairs on your head, God knows how many is on your head. He knows how many. Some of y'all got one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all got more than that. But the Lord knows the number. Go ahead. Fear ye not, therefore, ye, you are of more value than many sparrows. Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men. Meaning you're special. Go ahead. Him will I confess also before my father. You confess him before men, him, I'll confess you before my father. Go ahead. But whosoever shall deny me before men. If you decide to go against your family, for your family back in the world, you become a traitor, an informant, an, an inquisitor. Go ahead. Him will I also deny before my father. You're going to die. You're going to die. You want clubhouse with, with freaking unfaithful people? Apologetics? BBC, ABC, NBC, SPLC? You're going to die here because you're a traitorous nigger or Spaniard. Go ahead. Verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So he's making it clear when Christ, when it comes to Christ's doctrine, it does not bring unity. It brings division in terms of the righteous from the wicked, the right from the wrong. It doesn't, you cannot unite the right with the wicked or light with darkness. It separates the two. The gospel separates the two. So if you are sitting here right now 
and you know you're in Israel and you celebrate New Year's with your family or just came back from doing so, you're not in the light. You're in the darkness. You can't be in both. That's why Elijah asked Israel, why are you hope between two opinions? Make a decision. They couldn't answer him a word. Like, you can't answer a word. Why are you celebrating Christmas? Why are you celebrating New Year's? They don't answer for that. You're just weak and evil. Weak and evil. Read on. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Because during Nero's time, you had Israelites that were conformed to Roman ways. You had mothers that were followed, that loved Nero, loved Rome Caesar's ways, tradition, Roman traditions. And their daughter was like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the commandments. What a mom do? I'm going I'm, I'm to tell the authorities on you then. What did dad do? What did the son do? What did the grandfather do? The same thing, vice versa. They in the world, you in the faith. They become your enemies. For righteousness sake. For righteousness sake. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So in the gospel, in Christ, your enemies shall be those of your own household. What's that saying? It says your enemies shall be. Not maybe, might be. It's, shall means it's inevitable. You're going to lose friends and family. Children, wives, husbands. Shall be, not might be, could be, may be. It's a shall, as in inevitably. Will be, future tense, your enemies. Go ahead. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Your cross is not celebrating New Year's with your family. Your cross is not celebrating Christmas with your family, Thanksgiving with your family. That's the cross you must bear. You must, you must take the brunt of the force that it comes with being considered called a cult, brainwashed, shunned by your family, ostracized. The Bible says blessed are you when that happens because the same thing happens to the prophets. The Messiah's family, the Messiah's brothers didn't believe him. I said, man, you ain't no damn Messiah. Get out of here. I changed your diet. Man, man, listen, man. You, 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 man, you, who are you? You change diapers. You out there with sheep, man. Come on, man. Get out of here with that. I'm a son of God. Yeah, okay. Yeah, me too. Only the one brother, James, believed. The rest of them was like, ah, nah. His own, Messiah's own siblings were an issue with him. So how much more yours? They don't say his siblings believed. I think one, one believed. Out of how many? He had, he had a, a few siblings. Read on. Verse 39. He that, findeth, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Go ahead. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Go ahead. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Come on. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Meaning prophets are subject to the prophets. Meaning, just to sum it up, you cannot, you can't, those, the disciples had to be around other disciples. There was no hanging around the wicked being around the evil and hanging out and, and being in a, and compromising, negotiating. You had to be steadfast, unwavering in this truth, loyal. And you receive a prophet's reward. The prophet's reward is, is, is everlasting life, living a godly life, not just faith only in mercy like a pagan Christian. Let me first Peter also, stop as a Christian. I'll wrap it up with that. First Peter, yeah, I'm done. First Peter, what's up as a Christian? Where's it at? You know what I'm talking about, right? What's up as a Christian? Yes, sir. First Peter 4.16. Yeah, read that. 
The book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian. What about verse uh, 15? Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. No, 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 no. Read uh, verse, um, read verse 13. Verse 13. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> read verse 12. Read verse 12. 12 to 16. We'll wrap it up there. The book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Just the what? Which is to try you. Come on. As though some strange thing happened unto you. What's happening to you is not strange. Remember, you mad cool with your mom. Y'all best friends. You mad cool with your wife. Y'all bet y'all, y'all loving relationship. Never argue none of that. You come into the faith, she becomes the devil. You're like, what happened? Don't think it's strange. That's normal, because it shall be, shall be enemies of your own household. So you, it can't, it's not strange. Your brother turned against you. Your sister turned against you. It's not strange. Read on. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. You are partakers of Christ's sufferings when you lose family. Go ahead. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with that exceeding was, joy. When Christ shows up, you can be happy. Oh, man, I was right. I, I was right. My faith wasn't wrong. A black man cracked that sky up and you're going to be like, damn, it was worth it. Go ahead. If you be reproached for the name of Christ. Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. On their part, your family, your foes, he is evil spoken of. Ah, it don't matter what color he is. Ah, he's all colors. He's not for everybody. On their part, he's evil spoken of. Go ahead. But on your part, he is glorified. But on your part, through your actions, he's glorified. Read on. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Well, if you're going to be a Christian or deemed a Christian or hated, don't suffer as a murderer. Go ahead. Or, is or he? a murderer going into you hating your people, plotting against your people, starting with, start with, start with the enemy against your people. That's a murderer. Go ahead. Or is he a thief? A thief that steal money from the congregation. Go ahead. Or is an evildoer? Or an evildoer. You celebrate New Year's, Christmas on the low, Thanksgiving on the low. Go ahead. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Or minding, or you're in other men's marriages. Minding other people's business. That don't concern you. A busybody in other men's matters. Interest between men and money situations. People, that happened with us. People leave a body here because of other people's matters. That ain't concern them. Busybodies. Go ahead. Verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Come on. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Judgment will begin with Israel first. God's going to bring for judgment to Israel first. So you must keep yourself together. Go ahead. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? On fire. Next verse. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Those who suffer according to what? The will of God. According to the will of God. So it is the will, it is the will of God to suffer. To be turned on by your family, your friends, your, fa- your, your, your loved ones. It is, the, it is the God's will that that happens. You will drink of that cup. The servant's not above his master. Go ahead. Commit the keeping of their souls to him and well, and well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Come on. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing. How? Well-doing? By keeping the commandments. Go ahead. As unto a faithful creator. As unto a faithful creator, which is the heavenly father and his son. So with that, hope you got an understanding of the class tonight. And shalom. You want to be that? Right, announcements, announcements. All praises for that class, uh, Deacon. All praises. All right, brother. Y'all got the announcements, right? All right. Let's pull up the first one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, yeah, play that video. 
Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ blessed. Guess what, Israel? It's nation time. That's right. The scriptures say in Zephaniah 2 and 1 for us to gather together, O nation I desire. In these last days, there's famine, rumors of war, and all type of pandemics hitting the earth. But guess what? Israel United Christ, we have a solution. The Most High used IUIC Houston pilot program dealing with these quails to start something big. Yeah. Us against the world, what will we deserve? War against our soul, it's the God we serve. Yeah. Us against the world, us against the world. The scriptures tell us to gather together, O nation, not desire. So here at the Houston camp, what ended up happening was uh, I was speaking to Captain Arama and the other leadership, senior leadership, and um, the, the question came up in prayers was asked for dealing with these quills. And I'm going to tell y'all something, Israel. We're coming together, we're trying to be self-sufficient, and we need y'all help, all right? The uh, capital is bringing that is definitely heavy for uh, the nation of Israel because as we send up prayers, we pray for um, the Most High, give us vision and give us um, the opportunity to uh, to do to do more, you know, to be ready to build. In these last days, the scriptures, it teaches us to be able to prepare for the end times and being able to gain wisdom of the scriptures. We see certain things dealing with even how the Lord, he, he dealt with on the level of giving uh, the Israelites 12 when they left out of Egypt. And he still saw it as a token to give to them. And ultimately understanding all these things we do is rehearsal of the scriptures to be able to properly prepare ourselves for these last days. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Bless. I'm so Jamil with the Houston camp. And y'all know, like leadership been saying, study, pray, and apply. With this part of the application. With this application, guess what? We got food stocked up, and we also got a part of this quail program. So y'all join in, help us out, help us be self sufficient. Shalom, Most High Christ Bless. Shalom, Most High Christ Bless. So the Hosea Houston camp, we're out here to uh, let Israel know that we're a part of this quail program. We want everybody. In Israel, to join in and get ready for this famine. It's very important in these last days. Remember, the no vision, the people fed. Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Shalom, 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 Israel. Most High Christ bless. Soldier Solid, Houston Camp. Hey, we're doing a really, really good thing for Israel implementing this new Quail program. Hey, one of the main reasons why I joined this, this Quail program, so I can be ready, so we could be ready, our houses could be ready for this famine that's coming. So Israel, as we gather together in these last days, one thing that we want to do is make sure that we prepare for the famine to come and make sure that we on top of having everything in place to make sure that we're ready for those hard times to come. Yes, sir. Shalom, Israel. A hey, famine is coming in these last days, and we must prepare ourselves. So uh, get on board with us. Most so high God, the capital spirit, you know, the vision, and all that's getting behind us here in Houston. Us against the world, dragging rock we heard. Texas for the Quell Project. All right, Shalom, Most High, and Christ bless Israel. With famine and pestilence hitting the earth in these last days, the Lord has put the spirit upon IUIC to start a Quell pilot program. We are raising Quell in urban environments for eggs and meat, closing the need for meats with anti antibiotics, steroids, and diseases. With the cost of meats going up and having meat shortages, we are making moves to prepare a self-sufficient source of protein. Remember Israel, the kingdom is within you. So all praises for that thing, man. We need that. All praises. All right, let's get the next video. What you got? The Passover, right? All right. Passover 2022. Registration coming soon. Put that up. All right. The official IUIC Passover festivities will take place March 30th to April 4th. All right. So get your days off from work and put your dollars aside. More information regarding location, Passover fees, and garments will be coming soon. All right, Israel? So make sure y'all put that money aside and start getting uh, putting those days in now. All right? Next. All right, thank you. Play the video.
Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel with an update from IUIC TV. We are now offering exclusive content on a monthly subscription. For the first time ever, exclusive content will be available to you for only a dollar ninety-nine monthly fee. That's right, for only a dollar ninety-nine. You'll be able to enjoy all the up-and-coming original content from IUIC. Short films, documentaries, TV shows, and more. You don't want to miss this. The exclusive content is not available through the app. You'll need to log on through a browser to begin your subscription. The exclusive content is available now, Israel. It's available now. Let's not waste any time. Log on to IUIC TV and subscribe now. Thank you in advance for all your support and many blessings. Until then, stay healthy, stay faithful, but most of all, let's stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom. All right, so that's IUIC TV. Exclusive subscription is now available. Sign up now and enjoy all new content at your fingertips. You can only access the content through a web, br a web browser, not the app. All right, see what people are saying about the exclusive content now. All right. Next announcement. You got it? Also, um, um, we hit the streets, too. A lot of people don't know this, that we hit the streets and we do um, missing person uh, right. flyer missions. Yes. yes right? They do. don't know that was why, why they claim that we're a hate group. There you go. IUIC Mobile, Alabama, hit the streets, and they, and they posted up a thing of those that they've been posting uh, stuff about right. those that were found. Feeling like it's something that it's doing, no. My mother with it, can't bring everybody to the door. And Jeremiah said, like, really, only two can go. I pray she make it to the gate, but only you know. You know. You know. Yeah, you know. You know. Yeah. I be riding through the city, I be calling it close. Old friends staring at me when I walk in the store. They be telling me I change your day for letting me know. Cause any man that don't change, had a straight for the cause. And you know. You, you. City, every town, that's a sight, no What we seeing only being undone now And you know yeah, you know Yeah, you know All right, all right, all praises All right, so that's how UIC Mobile is finding the missing of our people All right Find the missing of our people Um all right, brother, I got one more. Let me see. I'm trying to get it over to y'all. I might have to airdrop it. Hold on. One second, one second, one second, one second. One second is real. Well, in the meantime, um, are you doing that? I want to give a shout out to brothers on the clubhouse, man. The clubhouse. Um, there was a marathon. We did a, a clubhouse marathon. It was amazing. Uh, brothers on 25 hours straight from freaking third, was it Thursday night into Friday night. That thing was crazy, man. Shout outs to um, Abuka, the, the machine. That dude read the entire time. <laughs> Uh, Deacon yeah. ASAP, I, I ain't giving you a props, man. You, you, you'll be up to freaking nine in the morning. You do that since I've known you. <laughs> you just, just, Deacon ASAP is a machine, too. He doesn't, know, he doesn't stop. So that was a, 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 a groundbreaker. We had about 7,000 people viewing, 1,000 in the room, from like 1,000 to no less than 900 in the room all day. Like 25 hours of nonstop biblical truth coming out, doctrines being smashed. People coming forward, learning, getting edified. So I'll give a round of applause for that thing. That was a beautiful thing. It was excellent. I was great. I felt good being a part of it. 
And Lozo, we do it again sometime. But that was that was groundbreaking right there. Twenty five hours of un is just un freaking just ridiculous, man. I'm not without, I'm, I'm without words. So all praise for that. All right. Oh, and thank you for um, thank you to Android phones, brothers who had Android phones. Uh, all praise to the Lord that you was there and you wasn't sick. Oh, come on. Uh, all praise <laughs> to the Lord. We'll put that out there. iPhone, uh, you know, you don't care about you don't care about your iPhone. That's it. All right. Everybody with iPhone got sick. <laughs> iPhone sick. You know what's going on? Oh man. Um. All right. So give me the next video from IUIC Vegas. I think it's the last announcement right here. Video from IUIC Vegas. Y'all able to pull it up? Y'all got it? All right. All right. What's going on? <laughs> wow. All right, that's it. Let's pull it up. IUIC Vegas. All right, peculiar. Play it. Right, so that's IUIC Vegas playback on SoundCloud. Play one more time. Make sure everybody could hit play. Brothers, what's going on? Run it back. Yeah, run it back. IUIC Las Vegas. Volume 1, Peculiar. Alright, that's out now. On SoundCloud. You can get that on SoundCloud. Alright. At IUIC Las Vegas at Sin City. Download it now for free. Alright. All praise to the most high. So with that, that uh, I think that's the last announcement. I don't think any more coming in. All right, so I guess we could break bread. All right. Everybody got bread and wine, right? All right, let's get it. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given... When he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. But it's good. All 
All right. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give in. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what? His what?